we've got ICT. Oh, he's here. Here he is. Here he is. Bringing him in to co-host. See if he wants to co-host with me to hang out or if he just wants to be a speaker or, or what. But um, there he is. Let's see. If he just wants to listen to, we're, we're talking trading. We're talking parenting was the beginning of the conversation and uh, being a father and protect, provide and preside, preside and uh, boss, Mr. ICT, Mr. Michael Huddleston, thank you for being here and taking the co-host tag. How are you today, sir? Good morning, brother. How are you? I couldn't sleep last night. I was so excited, bro. <laughs> I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> I don't know why. I mean, we we spent almost four and a half hours talking in a, a, I in know. a discussion that because unfortunately I, was plagued. I love it. Bro. I, love it. <laughs> I, I love engaging and talking with you and, and just being one of your students on Front Street. I love it. <laughs> I mean, your wife, I mean, we only stopped talking because your wife was texting you, right? Like, she's like, are you coming to dinner or not, right? Like, so anyway, did you get any brekkie? Did you get some coffee? Did you, uh, are you a coffee drinker? I do not drink coffee. I didn't think you did. Do you like eggs for brekkie? Oh, yeah, Bagel? I, I, had egg. I had eggs this morning, actually. Nice. Egg whites, actually. Nice. So, um... The early part of the conversation, just to say it succinctly, and a few of my posts just in the in the theme there, because we have nerded we have jumped into some trading, right? But we were talking about parenting, and I wanted to ask you specifically how Cody's doing. I'd like to start the conversation with maybe you giving us a, a how he's doing, a follow up in a little bit more in depth of uh, because I say that to say protect provide and preside were kind that was kind of the theme girl dad's understanding kind of you know being a parent how that changes your why as a trader well um it's it's been over a month now that uh, he's been out of what would be considered life threatening and as his dad, obviously, I know him better than most people would. If you were to sit down and talk to him, you probably wouldn't notice anything different about him. But I can, I can, I can tell that there's something still not right there, and <clears throat> it's it's a miracle he's still here. Obviously, I'm very thankful for that. But uh, there's just something I can't put my. I was literally talking to my other son, Caleb, last night about this because he came by and visited. And he asked how Cody was as well. And I said he had visited a few a few days ago. And I don't know how to put my finger on exactly what it is that's different, but he's not totally himself. So uh, they they kind of warned us and told us it could be like that for months and not to draw any kind of special attention to it because you don't want to alarm him or make him you know, think about anything to stress about. But uh, he had a lot of irritable swings in his moods for the first couple of weeks that seems to have smoothed out, but it, it just doesn't seem like himself. It, it's not like he's, uh, he's not slower and he's not, it, it's not that he can't recall certain things, but it, I, as a dad, I, you know, your kid, and I just don't think he's quite there yet. And I'm hoping that he gets a full return back to his personality and his normal everyday life the way you know he functions he goes he goes to work again he's fine in that regard but i i just know that there's something just a little bit off and my my wife said the same thing but she doesn't want to say more about it because there's power in the tongue and you know we don't want we don't want to give it any more energy than i've already said here but other, apart from that he's in, improved greatly he's back to working and he and his fiance are are planning on getting married, so that's a that's a good thing. Wow, that's a huge milestone. So, yeah. so in a lot of ways, this has been kind of. I mean, obviously, 
I mean, have you noticed a, a level of maturity just as a dad talking about our kids and going through a um, traumatic event, right? Ha, 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 is his worldview really changed? Does he value or appreciate the things that he has differently that you, that you notice? Um, I'm greatly appreciative of where he is now mentally about everything. Cause when he was younger, you know, I was uh, the typical dad that wanted to have his kids grow up, you know, believe in the Bible and, you know, go to church and this is what you should behave like. And this is what you should abstain from. And, and I was really aggressive about it when I first started living it. And it, and looking back, that's not the right way of doing it, but you feel like it is. And he kind of resisted it a lot. And in, in his earlier teens, he just basically said, you know, uh, I'm not believing it, you know. And it caused a little bit of a rift between us where he lived a lifestyle that was not something that I would agree with or support. But I let him do what he had to do to discover it's wrong. And I tried to tell him not to buy the motorcycle. Because I made the mistake of buying one, too, and messed myself all up. He didn't listen, and he kept taking risks, taking risks, taking risks. And I told him, I said, you can only do that so many times before eventually it happens, and you can't call it back. And you could either get checked out and your ticket punched or get something that would be debilitating for the rest of your life and regret, and it's probably worse. And he was riding without a helmet having his dogs chase him. And that was like their daily exercise. And they had just got home from having dinner at a restaurant. And he took off down the road, going about 40 mile an hour. And his stepbrother was walking his dog at the end of the road. And he ran out in front of the motorcycle. And to keep from running him over, he panic braked all front brakes and went over the handlebars no helmet and we landed at the back of his head which is the same injury that everybody gets when they get killed from the one knock the one punch knockout you know that pieces of shit that do that and we like to record it uh, when they fall and they hit the back of their head they die from that injury most of the time and he had literally a quarter of an inch separating him in that same fate he was telling me prior to that uh, the accident that he was never going to not ride a motorcycle and he wanted to get a faster one and i, I was like you know I, I can't stop him he's, he's an adult but uh long story short now he doesn't want the bike he doesn't want to restore it he never wants to get on it again and he's appreciative that you know god spared him uh, he has a different perspective on his life and how he feels like he's been kept here given another chance um those were things I prayed for. And I, I, I literally said, you know, Lord, if you have to put him through something to get his attention, you know, do what you got to do. Because I, as his dad, I can't reach him anymore. And now mindset wise and how he wants to walk forward, he wants to be more responsible. He wants to be here for his fiance. And they're talking about having kids eventually. And you can't, you can't do that if you're not here. And you can't do that effectively if you take risks with your life. So he's, he's no longer interested in trying to be a, motorcycle operator anymore so that i'm very thankful for that well i think on behalf of the community i think we're very thankful that he's on this road to recovery so i mean a lot a lot of a lot of thoughts and energy going out to to you and yours and i, I know he's been a thought on on a lot of folks mind and it's been brought up to me and, and having you here, I'm, I'm glad that we're able to, you know, talk about it a little bit, you know? Yeah. So I understand how it's still heavy and, and, and probably tough to kind of relive or, or talk about. I, I can only imagine as a father. So we don't have to harp on it by any means, but I think we wanted to just kind of, Address it a little bit, if, if, if that's cool. Yeah. Um, and we did. So with that, um, did you – I'm looking at a tweet 
that is, is there something you wanted to talk about specifically or is there a topic that uh, that you would like to to introduce to to the room uh, no I, I you know when we did our interview I mean we went for like four four hours four and a half yeah. hours something like that four and a half almost five hours from my notes. Yeah. and we had issues with um, where on my end because I was recording it the the video would hang up and it would glitch and I had another interview that I did and I, I wish it wouldn't have been like that as well but the bandwidth caused a problem for zoom and your internet connection was coming through in like breaks so I didn't want to put that up there and I told you we could do it again but I don't think I want to do the video I think this is actually a better medium it's a little bit more um, I'm more comfortable in this setting me too. Bro. I I, I, Me too. I like the idea of these, just being able to speak like out into the ether and not have someone staring back at me and me staring at them. It's just it's a really I'm a very introverted person, and you may not think that's possible because how I go off on the Twitter spaces, but uh, I am very introverted. And if you ever met me in public, I would be very reserved and quiet, and I wouldn't be like I am usually on on a Twitter space. Like like now I'm talking to you, I wouldn't be this comfortable talking with you in, in front and you face to face. It just it wouldn't be like that. I'd have to get to know you a little bit and be around you a little while and then maybe slowly work out of that shell. But uh, I, I saw you mention or not saw you mention, but I heard you mention um, the last space that you were hosting and you're asking if it was all right for you to upload what you had. And I was like, you know, what? there were some things that we talked about that I didn't want yeah, I think it's the same thing with Corpse. Right, Corp no, asked for a lot sure. Of questions. I, I didn't record anything, by the way. I had I had one screenshot picture, just one, and I was on an <clears> iPad. <throat> and out of respect to you, I, I would never do that. I took notes fervently afterwards, just because it was so important to me. But yeah, yeah I don't have any documentation or record of of our conversation outside of my notes, just for the record. If you did, I mean, I, I just felt it would be a little bit more organic to to sit down and and kind of like have a, a discussion. Because I, I love the fact that you've built this community. And while I haven't been in every single one of them since you, the inception of it, uh, and, and when I first discovered it, there was a few times I wasn't able to make it because of personal you know, schedules and things that wouldn't permit me to do it. But when it's available to me to be able to sit and listen to it, I do. You know, I may be doing work around the house or doing things, you know, require my hands-on stuff, but I'm listening to it in the background and just to be able to hear, you know, how everybody comes forward and not necessarily the folks that use what I teach and what I've you know, contributed. It, it's not just that. I, I love the fact that there is a, an acceptance of everyone that is a traitor because you know, <laughs> I, I am, I'm vilified many times and I, and I've done this to myself and it's part of how I marketed myself, but the, uh, I wanted to be abrasive so that way people would talk about it. And then when they came to investigate what it is I was teaching, um, they would either be converted or do what I believe is impossible to prove what I'm teaching isn't the market. And they not been they have not been successful in the latter, but I've converted a lot of people to see things a little bit differently. And they don't have to like me. It's not about worshiping me. But I, I feel that the the way this industry is going um i i tend to be the poster child for the the chaos side of it and my community uh many times gets the you know, the brunt end of you know what's wrong with the trading community and i don't want that and when i when i came out and started teaching for free i kind of like wanted to remove that stigma that was there and it's still a useful thing for people that want to market their own stuff They'll say, you know, ICT or ICT's community, a bunch of cult members and, you know, they're fanatics, you know, whatnot. And they think everything else can't make money. We, I am aware that other people make money. You know, I have, I have friends, longtime friends that literally use things that have nothing to do with anything mathematical or charts. They just go with their gut and say, this is what I think is going to happen. And because they do really well in money management, they make profits, but it's not a lot. They still work their job. But they can pay for their little toys every now and then, a couple times a year, with what they've earned. Now, does that make them unprofitable? No, of course not. They've made money. And I'm not going to criticize them. They don't ask me 
my opinion of what it is they do. They just think you probably look at what I do and think it's nuts. And I just smile and <laughs> yeah, like, well, I'm not going to say anything, but yeah, I wouldn't do it that way. But your community, and I don't know if it's been like this from the beginning or if it's something that's evolved over time, but you're very inclusive. And I absolutely love that. And I, I think that that is what makes this trading industry something that's helpful to other people, even if you don't subscribe to the same view or approach to trading. Um, for someone like yourself to help cultivate that and kind of like be a, a the, the, the tip of the spear to kind of like say, hey, look, this is what we can be doing instead of saying, you know, you don't do well as a trader or you're a fraud or you can't do this and your stats are less than this one or this one does it better than that. You know, that really doesn't do anything for anybody's bottom line. And it's, it's a wonderful drama. You know, it creates a lot of distraction from doing the things that matter most, which is improving your own edge and, and de developing who you are as a trader. And for folks that are easily distracted with that kind of stuff and spend most of their time with it, to me, you know, that that just indicates that your your head's really not in the game. And I love listening to the like-mindedness that everyone has here because they share a genuine concern about progress collectively, not just their individual progress. And they care for other people when they share openly, which is another thing I love. When your community members come forward and they talk about the things that they're going through as a hardship. You know, I can resonate with that because I've been through everything and I didn't have this type of thing. Like it's, I, I've never drank alcohol. I never had a substance abuse problem. I, I don't take medications. I don't take medicine at all. And if I was a substance abuser, I obviously would go to things like Alcoholics Anonymous or, or a, uh, well, Narcotics Anonymous, th those type of support things. I would be, I would be using that. Because I'm a firm believer of being in a community where you can see other people are going through what you're going through. And it's normal because when you go through pain, you go through struggles with anything, it tends to create this depression and it grips you and it makes you feel like it's is only happening to you and nobody could understand. And in trading, this is such a difficult thing to overcome because you're competing with yourself while in a state of ignorance. You can't see beyond what you already know about yourself and what you have a limited understanding about the markets. And that experience is growing very, very slowly in the beginning. So you're constantly feeding yourself free to not even try it. And you feel like what you're thinking or doubting or, or fearful of is only happening to you because you're the failure. And when your community members step forward and they talk about, hey, I, I'm, this is what I'm going through right now. And mm -hmm. It's nice to hear other people encourage them and also hear that this is what they did to get through it. That to me is empowering. I, I love that. And many times I got emotional listening to some of the folks that have been emotional and have their hearts on their sleeves. That's, that's tapping into the reality of what it is like to be a human doing something so extremely difficult where it's, it's a thankless endeavor in the beginning. No one's going to support you doing this. In the beginning, everyone's going to give you every reason why you shouldn't do it. They're going to try to talk you out of it. They're, you're going to try to talk yourself out of it. And it's going to be very, very hard to stay with it. And if you can find a community like what you have going here, man, it, it's such an oasis because I would have loved, I absolutely would have loved to had the access to something like this where other people were literally there talking and, and going through what it is that they have to mow over and the, and the loss and the feeling of, can I get past this? You know, what am I going to have to focus on to get through this? And asking other people's perspectives on, you know, how, how, how did you deal with this? You know, am I, am I foolish in thinking that this would be a solution or an approach to get past that? What did you do? And is this wrong or is this a better way of doing it? That to me, is amazing. That's better than any kind of book out there because it's allowing people with real experiences and real issues that you may not have encountered yet or are encountering right now, but you're too afraid to talk about it. You're too afraid to deal with it. You try to hide your turn your, your face like it's not really there. And that's a problem. You have to just deal with it. You, you have to meet it head on and don't be afraid of it. And if you fail while trying, that's progress. 
That's literally progress because you're going to look back and say, okay, I tried it this way. That didn't work. I tried it that way. That didn't work. Okay. I'm at my wit's end, but I'm not giving up. Let me ask someone else. I want to ask my peers in a like-minded environment where everybody in your community, they're not attacking each other. They're not saying, oh, well, you don't trade our way. Oh, you don't do this. You don't do that. Um, for instance, the, that guy, uh, I don't know his name. I don't, I don't even think he has a name. The other, the other guy that you, uh, you, you learn it under. M M7. Um, M7. Yeah. Yeah. There for a while, you know, his community, my community, they were trying to get some spat going, whatnot. You know, everybody's got a team mentality. Everybody has a team mentality. Everybody gets their alma mater, you know, behind them and they want to raise their banner and their flag and all that business. And I'm of the opinion that, listen, if the students have an issue with, someone else's methodology and the methodology is making the other group money. They have no argument. There's no argument there. This community, I've never heard anyone in this community say, or at least the ones I've listened to, um, where they have not been very cordial to one another. And to me that I have a great deal of respect for that because number one, that's not selling drama for the sake of selling your brand. It's reassuring that if they have the results using that methodology or any other methodology, they're, they're blooming where they're planted. They don't need to do or do what I do or what I teach. They, they could give two shits, really. They don't care because they found something that fits them. And that's all I try to do. I try to cultivate that mindset. Well, whatever it is that you do, you, know, you might use just one idea that I have introduced as a as a, a school of thought. That doesn't mean I mentored you. That doesn't mean you got to go around and tell everybody I was mentored by ICT and you got to carry me around like a celebrity. I don't want that. In this community, while it you know your 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 name for the Twitter uh, handle is, has my name in it and it's about ICT concepts, it's not predominantly ICT uh, concepts, which. That's the that's the direction I want to see. Like I want to see a departure from me, and I want to see what other people do with the information and how it makes them a better human, a better trader, and not have to always reflect back to me. And you've created an environment where you're allowing that. You're not like a you're not like a fanboy, which I get it because if when I was younger at twenty years old, I would have went nuts to meet Larry Williams. Like I would have went crazy just to meet that guy because I elevated him up to some unrealistic plateau that no man should be placed to. And I, and I'm the least of which anybody should do that. I'm a terrible teacher. I don't control my tongue. Well, I'm not a good advocate for Christ because I can't control my tongue and it's things I struggle with. So there's a lot of things I can check off as a, as a checklist of where my frailties are. So I should not be championed around like most people like to do with me. And I love the fact that you conduct this community in a manner, and I'm glad you're very respectful because for folks that don't know, I've asked in the interview that Kit and I had where we talked for a while, I said, listen, I, I love sitting in and listening. I just don't have another account where I can go in and listen and other people not know I'm there. I don't do sock puppet accounts. I don't do those types of things. But there's, oh, I wish there was a way for me to have had to sit in and never be recognized in there because I want the people that come forward and talk and be part of your community to pretend I'm not even there. Don't make it about me. Just talk about what it is that you brought yourself there to talk about. And if you want to say something to me, I'm on Twitter and you can say hi to me. I'll, I'll, I'll like your post. I'll say something back if I feel like I have to do it. But that, that setting, that, that's the part that makes it uncomfortable for me. Like, I don't want to be like that. And you've been very respectful in regards to, to trying to steer the community members to, to not do that because I'm not here to hear people talk about me. And I want people to hear it from me in your community that I love it when you don't talk about me and you just talk about your experience. I'm genuinely interested much as like I said, when you were talking to me in the, the zoom live, I, I have a genuine sincere interest in other people's experiences. Like I, that's what I want. I want to spend the rest of my life after November watching and observing and looking at seeing what everybody else is doing. I have a genuine interest in it. It's a sincere interest. 
that I don't have to monetize. I don't have to have my name brought up about it. I just want to see what everyone does with it because I'll be blessed by that by default. I don't need to have someone, you know, parading around and, and, and advertising me. And I've done, I think you've done an amazing job of managing your community in that regard and still making an allowance and in, an inviting atmosphere for other people with different approaches to trading where they can feel like, you know, I, I, you know, sometimes they'll open up and say, well, I, I don't trade with what you guys use, but this is what I do, but I like the community. That's exactly, that's exactly what you've done. You've created that atmosphere where normally someone might not go to a, like a live streamers or, or a podcast um, event or, or venue because they're very team oriented. They're, they're, you know, they're this and only this. That kind of causes someone to feel standoffish and say, well, you know, if I go out there, they're probably going to try to pin me down and ask me why I don't want to subscribe to their view and what makes their methodology better. And that just creates an argument that no one can win because no one would convince me that what I use isn't better than everything else. When you know, I know personally that I think that there's nothing else better than this. But when people hear me say that, and they're either learning or they're using something that's profitable for them, they tap into that team mentality. They want to go back to college football. You know, uh, well, my team's going to kick your team's ass in the playoffs, or I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. You know, it's your NASCAR driver. You know, it's your whatever the hell it is, your MMA fighter. You're, you, it's this team mentality. I can't stand that. Like, I literally cannot stand it. And I try to smash that with everything I say. And even when I talk about myself, I don't want any of that stuff in my community. And I think that you've done a more effective way of managing it and allowing for a, an immersion experience where no one can feel alienated. I mean, I love when you put your foot down and people are in here fucking off. <laughs> you hear them talking about, yeah, you know, I've done this and I've done that. I never lose a trade. I think it was a couple spaces ago. I almost pissed myself. The guy's like, yeah, I do this and I do this and I haven't ever a losing trade. And you're like, okay, hold on. What you're telling me is, is you never win. <laughs> I'm sorry, you never lose and you always win. Get the fuck out of here. That's the, that's what you do. That's exactly, you got to broom that bullshit. But everything else, you're very, very good at managing the the atmosphere for everyone else to feel comfortable. So if you want to come on and you want to talk bullshit, you know, good, call it, call it what it is, broom it, get rid of it. But you've allowed for people to have a ulterior perspective or alternative perspective and not feel at least from my observation, I, I wouldn't feel uncomfortable. Nothing was cringy about it where another style or approach to trading that the members would come forward in the community or maybe it was their first visit. And they always thank you that you've allowed for this medium in this community for people to come together and meet. And I, I think that you should be recognized for that because you know, what you're doing this community in, in, in the industry itself needs more of this type of stuff. And you conduct yourself very, very well. Um, and it, it's, you've done a very effective job of allowing for the open invitation for people to come forward. And I think more people should be here. Oh my God. Thank you so much for those flowers, Michael. Thank you so much for the acknowledgement, the recognition, and I'm, I want you to know, and I want anybody and everyone that's listening, like a lot of this is, I mean, I'm 45, I turned 46 in a few weeks, right? And a lot of this, very similar to things that you've said throughout your episodic life's work that you've pushed out there when I was 20 or, or if, uh, if I could, you know, if I could go back in time, like I, I really do look at the 20 year old who's listening and those things, those lessons that I think are extremely impactful and powerful, you know, one, number one is respect, right? I mean, follow, listen, listening to what someone wants to their request. I think that I think respect amongst men is primordial uh, and not just men amongst traders, but then also Michael, I, I mean, I, I want to turn, and I, I want people to understand what I believe your life's work is, is this self-improvement manual above and beyond trading and where and even how you utilize 
numbers and timestamps and whether your intuition is flaring or you're doing it mindfully or the terminology of, uh, of a market structure shift and a change in character and where and how the guide to a person's individual improvement of self going from that intra perspective, that intrapersonal dialogue within themselves to where and how they interpersonally can reflect and deal with others and or the market itself. I think it's a masterclass on self-improvement. And I think there's so many more deeper, deeper levels emotionally, mentally, spiritually, in which you've touched on over the years, time and time and time again, that why so many folks are able to listen to you. And, and a lot of folks might not have that father figure. A lot of folks might not have that mentor in a space that needs it. You've done a master class in providing a way in which a young man or woman can really take on these challenges within life and be able to apply becoming a professional decision maker. Not just on the charts, in life. And I mean, I, I just want to tell you, as a, a student of yours, for as long as I've been a student of yours, maybe it's from a, an older man's perspective, but this community is forged in your work. And I believe strongly the advanced concepts of ICT are the core tenets of which this community have been found on. And you've heard me say it, and, and I, I, I say it again. It's this mastermind principle. We're stronger together than we are alone. That we can accomplish more together than we can uh, together in a year than we could individually in a lifetime. That we rise by lifting others. You've asked this question repeatedly. If you had the gift You've referred to it to me personally as the increase. What do you do with it? And for me, that's to trumpet as loud as fucking humanly possible. Ways in which to help other people. We rise by lifting others, which I think is a Rand Ingersoll quote. But. These, to me, are core tenets within your life work that as an older, maybe more mature father and trader, I've been able to conceptualize and articulate. And we have based everything within this community based off of what I believe are the core tenets that you've provided us as, as a student body. So I appreciate all the flowers but I, I still turn it and, and say very gratefully with a lot of respect, thank you. And on behalf of the, the student body, bro, none of us would be here without your insights and your clarity and what you've been able to provide this global community. I mean, you're, you're, you're teaching third world folks, kids, how to have hope. Man, if that it's doesn't very, uh, respect, I don't know what does, bro. It's it's, it's very overwhelming when, like, I I wish I could have more time to be able to reply to everybody that sends things to me. Like, I it's I feel like I'm cheating them from the opportunity that they just want to have a a moment to to thank me. I, I see all of the notations i see every comment i see every thing that i open but there's so many emails that i get every single day like it's at a pace and quantity that i, I can't if I, I i did it 18 hours a day non-stop no breaks I, I wouldn't even scratch the surface of the the correspondence i get and 
that's why I re- I reply in blanket statements a lot because a lot of it's the, the same thing. They just want to say thank you. And the way you thank me is turn your life around with it and then bless somebody else with it. But that's how you do it. That's the currency here. I want to see other people be impacted on a positive with what you do with it. What you do with this, how do you bless somebody else with it? You know, and I didn't have that mindset when I first started. You know, I talked about this when we were having the interview, and I said it many times in the past as well. Uh, I was initially just wanting to get out of the rat race and not have to work the rest of my life. And then when I see how fast the market can pay out, it changed me. It it turned me into a very greedy, self-centered person, which is what money can do to anyone. And you think it might not happen to you. And this is how I felt about it. But I turned into a very arrogant prick. Now, you, you think I'm arrogant now, but I am nothing compared to what I was when I was in my 20s. And it was disgusting, very offensive. And I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to tolerate myself today. Some of you probably can't tolerate me now. <laughs> but it was, it was very, very, very disgusting. And when I talk to my children, because that's who I'm really aiming at when I'm talking in the videos, and unless I'm specifically calling somebody out by name and I'm addressing something that I feel that they could use or whatnot. And I said this to my son, Caleb, last night. I said, uh, he goes, I was listening to your uh, Twitter space the other day. I said, yeah, which one? And he's like, you know, this and that. And I said, yeah, I was thinking about your brother. When I'm talking, I'm, I'm talking about your brother. And I'm, I'm, I'm envisioning them in the room and I'm trying to picture them sitting in front of me and I'm counseling them. And many times I put the hat on as if I could be my own father and talk to my younger self. This is what I wish I would have had a dad tell me. And I didn't have that. You know, my father, he's been in prison my entire life. I've not been able to have that type of connection with him. So as a child, I lived in a fantasy world that my dad would get out and, and marry my mom and everything would be happy and, and I'd have a, a normal childhood because I had to live vicariously through my friend's parents and being like a, like a surrogate son and daughter and brother and father and mother kind of entity in, in that, that environment. I was attracted to that. And many of the friendships that I had were strong because I wanted to be part of that family fabric that they had. And I was envious of that. I didn't have it. So bringing up my children and wanting them to be in a position where if the Lord so decides that I, I got to go and he's calling me home, you know, I could have met with an untimely demise, you know, just like my son always did. Again, it could still happen. Like this could be the last time I'm talking to her space. I, you know, I, nobody's promised tomorrow, but I try to lead these things down. So my kids can hear me and they know I'm talking to them. And I, I get it that a lot of the students, and this is like the number one thing that I get as a response and people send it to me through uh, trading view comments and whatnot. I feel like you're talking to me. Like when, when I'm listening to you talk, it feels like you're talking to me. And that, that rapport that we build together, I'm appreciative of, but in all honesty, I'm talking to my children. And because I'm talking to my children, everything I'm saying is all truth, all emotion. I'm 150% behind what I'm saying. And that's why sometimes I get emotional because I want them to succeed. And by default, because all of you have inclined your ear to the things I'm putting out there, you're you're giving me your time, which is invaluable. Like it's no, there's no price tag to put on that. Like no mentorship cost or, or fee, you know, could scratch the surface of you giving your weekend hours of listening to some man, you know, talk about things and you glean from that, what you should be doing in your own personal life. Like I, I'm, I'm a, a regular person. Like that's all I am. a regular person with a lot of various experience in doing things that I wasn't formally trained to do. Everything I learned in college, I don't even apply it. It's it's not applicable. 
I couldn't even get a job with it. The Lord said, no, this isn't where I want you. And I asked for the gift of teaching. And I still believe if he gives me more time here, I think I can improve as a teacher. But I don't feel I hit the mark yet. And I want to make lasting impressions on my children. And by default, for the folks that have an affinity for what it is that I, I try to do, I'm appreciative that they feel that rapport and that re they resent with what it is I'm teaching and, and sharing and appreciate the fact that I'm doing it where I don't, I don't have to, like, I don't have to do it. And I don't have to make known the things that I give out publicly. I don't have to give the personal things that go on in my family and what my children encounter and how they're wrestling with certain things and, or what I wrestled through. You know, most people would have been too embarrassed to ever talk about some of the things I've brought up about myself. But I want you to understand that there's a real person that went through some of the things you may have not encountered yet. Or maybe you have gone through it and you felt that it was too overwhelming, so don't bother. And you just can't leave trading alone. You just come and you hang around people that talk about it, but you can't do it now because you're too scared. Now, I've been there. You know, I've been there. And my son, Cameron, he, he went through a little bit of it, but he's back in there again. He's up $1,300 on one of his uh, express accounts three days of winning. And I told him, I said, you, you just got to stay at it and don't keep swinging for the fences all the time. You, you can't do that. It's normal to try that. It's normal to have the desire to do that. But when you fail and you fall down, you know, that's expected because you're trying to do more than that's necessary. And over time, you'll learn to have better footing. You'll know exactly how you stand when you throw that haymaker. And that way you don't get off balance. You're trying to do everything behind every single attempt. And you'll learn how to measure this at this activity level. You're trying to produce for results. No book can teach you that. I can't articulate it. And even in videos or, or Twitter spaces, that's the part that everybody has to work towards and get with their own experience doing it. And everybody that fights me on this and or asks how long is it going to take or this takes too long to learn how to do it. It's frustrating because that's the individual that will quit before they get to that one little crossroad where they make the right decision and go one step further. And then that, now they're at that point where they'll never stop trying. And that's a necessary requirement in this industry because it's so easy to convince yourself it's not worth it. And for a long time, you know, everybody just thought that this stuff is contrived and nobody can be consistent. It can't be predictable. There isn't really any precision and nobody else can learn it. It's just him doing some kind of magic trick. You know, I have a legion of people all around the world, different walks of life, and they've, they come forward with their results and they keep coming forward with their results. And it's in a manner where it can't be faked. And I'm so proud of all of you. I'm so proud of all of you that you've, you've, committed your time, effort, you've given up your weekends, you've given up your time in the evening when you come home from work or come home from school, you cram in every possible moment to, to study and observe and listen and take notes, all that stuff for the folks that are seeing the results. In the beginning, they didn't think it was going to work. If they're going to be 100% honest with you, they were waiting for themselves to be met with the proof that it was not going to work for them. But for those individuals, they kept doing exactly what I said to keep doing, avoiding the things I told them to avoid. And it's hard. It takes a lot of discipline. It takes a lot of effort to stay with it. And it's you don't get cheerleaded. You, you, you know, my wife still, <laughs> she doesn't understand it. And she thinks it's trivial. Like, oh, it's the video game. You know, it, it's it's not an impressive thing to me. She, she, she doesn't have the capability to understand the difficulty in what we do, it's not easy. Like you're having to determine the future at a moment's instant right there. You have to decide what's the future going to bring right now. Is it going to do this or is it going to do that? And if I don't do it right, it takes from me. It takes from me. So I have an invested interest in the outcome of this future prediction. Whereas you play a board game or you play a video game. Okay, well, I can respawn. It's not a big deal. You know, that guy may have taken me out in the game and may laugh at me, you know, do some kind of taunt towards the end of the game, and I got to see that and witness it. But after that, and you respawn, it's over. Who cares? You, you, you've done something. You're doing something new. 
you're distracted. In trading, we don't have that luxury because when it takes something from you, you're in lack. You're underneath the water and you have to get that back before real progress is seen again. And that difficulty is very intimidating in the beginning. And when you discover just how much you have to go through to really learn about yourself and what you have to overcome and meet and describe, this is what your process of going through this character flaw and overcoming it is going to require. Some of you won't want to do it. Some of you will have to fight kicking and screaming to get through that before you ever see, see any progress in trading. There's things that we have to beat up in us, conquer, subdue, overtake, hold captive. So that way it gives us time to grow outside of those natural tendencies to be human. We as humans, we, we live with certain attributes that are negative, but we don't associate them as negative because we've grown comfortable with what they are. It might be codependency. It might be staying in a relationship with someone that you know is absolutely toxic and you're keeping yourself there because the, the effort and time and energy of making the change and the scariness of it, you're, you're grown comfortable with that discomfort and you call it normal. You call that normal. And in the beginning, it's normal for you to feel like it's not going to work for you and to doubt it. It's normal for you to feel like your results aren't worth staying with it because it's probably never going to get better than that. Or you don't do it well in the beginning and you don't see immediate gratification. I needed the very thing that I try to provide for all of you. I needed that and I didn't have it. I, through prayer, was, and I believe I was ministered to through that and encouraged. But I wanted someone that I could tap into at least once a week. And because it's my nature to be like this, I'm obsessive. I try to be every day in your ears, every day reminding you, this is what you're looking for. This is what you're striving for. This is what you should be focusing on. Don't let this bother you. Keep your focus on this. Keep doing what you're doing. It's going to work. It's going to work every week, every day, and it won't stop. I believe it. I live it. But it has to be constantly reminded to you. Even though you can't hit that yet, you will. You will. But you have to go through that progress, that uncomfortable valley where you just don't see where it's going to take you to the higher ground. How long have got to stay down here? As long as it takes for you and every single one of you have a journey that you have to walk. I can't walk it with you. You have to do it. Nobody else is going to make it a shorter journey. Nobody can shorten it for you. Okay. Nobody can make it any less painful. You're going to have to go through it. And I try not to sugarcoat that because I want my kids to understand if I was to be met with the untimely demise, that they hear me tell them, if you don't have me now, you have me telling you these things that are absolutely what I'd be telling you if I was still with you. And it all started on this idea that I watched the, the Michael Keaton movie, My Life. You know, he had a terminal illness and he said, well, I'm not going to be here when my kid's born. I'm not going to be able to raise him up. And I'm going to just make videos and talk about, hey, this is what we do. And this is what a, a dad would teach his kid if he was there. I'm going to do all these things. I'll do it in videos. That way, when you grow up, you can watch dad and tell, he'll tell you exactly what he should be telling you if he was there. So because I had anxiety when I was younger, I was fearful I was going to check out early. And I was thinking to myself, if I go and I don't make this known, I've been selfish with it. And I've not done a good job of sharing it. And I, I felt that if I did it in the context of teaching my children and making it available to other people that would be inclined to listen to it. You know, it was a social media experiment. It was there anybody else that I could create by doing this. Could, could I get another ICT out of that laboratory experiment could happen? Can I create profitable students going through the same thing that I went through when I released that content all the way back on baby pips, that order is the exact order I went through through my journals. The things I went through, the things I focused on, the progress of everything, the order of the content in my core content. That's exactly the order of the importance I placed everything and how I discovered everything. Everything is a, it's a, a pattern of how it was revealed to me. It was absolutely 100% 
detailed in that order. And I'm waiting to see. That's why I tell all of you, I'm actively, sincerely interested in seeing who does what with it. And there's a lot of you that have done this. You've turned around, you, you've created mentorships. Some of you have rebranded and renamed the things that I've put out there and foolishly lied and said, I've done those things when I haven't done that. I'm not impressed with that. I'm not going to shoot you down because you need to eat and you probably have a family and whatnot, and that's fine. The folks that take the information and they do well with it and they go out and they find other people and, and help them. Yeah, I can tell you here and, and start crying <laughs> all the things that people around the world have been doing with what I've shown them how to do. They've built hospital wings with my name over them. And I don't deserve things like that. You do though, buddy. I want, I want to interject. I want you to know the impact, the global impact that you've had and the fact that I have a voice, you do deserve it. And you might not see it, but I want you to know and I want you to feel how much love, appreciation, and respect you have for the increase that not only you have been provided, but that you've provided. You do deserve it, brother. You do. You deserve far more than that. Your impact is palpable on the lives of so many. And I, I want, and I'm blessed to be able to interject on the points that you're making. You do deserve it. And I, I, I want to stand on your shoulders and in your shadow as a student trying to pick down, pick up what you've been putting down as just a, a, a humble follower. And I want to say with all my heart, brother, you do deserve it. You deserve every blessing that you get. And, and you have put yourself on front street. You've had these challenges and they've done nothing but take you from this angelic cult-like figure to making you an extremely real ass motherfucker. And that realness is why so many people will drop what they're doing because you've got something to say. I want you to understand that the folks here all echo what I'm saying because it's important that you get to hear it. Not for adulation, not for any other reason than you do deserve wings and hospitals to be named after you. The increase that you have provided a global community, it feels divine, Michael. You need to know that as just a peer, as a friend, as a student, as another man, as a mere mortal. Um, is it okay if I can say something real quick? I think so. So, um, I'm a 21 year old man. Um, <laughs> And I'm, I live in Canada right now. I'm just trying to be human here and just speak my thoughts. Um, in 2013, the war got really, really, really bad in Syria. Um, I went through a lot. My um, we, we were better because my dad was a doctor, but it was still just affecting all of us. Right near my house, there was tanks, explosions everywhere. My mom would go get some yogurt. Five minutes later, she leaves the store, an explosion in the, in the store. Everyone's dead in it, stuff like that. So we, we went through a lot. And uh, in 2013, I came to Canada. We were the first family to come as a refugee. Um, we were accepted and we came. My aunt was here. She was the one who took care of us. Uh, we struggled a lot. So uh, we, we went through a lot. And um, it was funny because around like two and a half years ago, it was like in this. So my family are, um, they're Druze. They are, it's a brand. I don't know if you know what that is. It's a. 
branch from Muslims, but it's totally different beliefs. Well, not totally, but it's different. Uh, I never resonated with that. And um, I started finding Christ around two and a half years ago. And it was so funny because in the same like two weeks where I was trying to find Christ, a, a Christian friend of mine gave me your name and your content. And I took it as of like that it's it was from God. This was from God proving himself to me. And I just put in work and it was all there. And uh, I can come here and be thanking you about everything you're doing on the church, but you already know all that. So I, I truly want to thank you for making me a better son to my parents. I want to thank you for making me a better brother to my siblings. I want to thank you for making me a better man to, to my girlfriend because you, you changed my whole view on everything. And of course, most importantly, you got me so close to Christ, man, like you got me so close to him. It was like, I don't even know. And like the, the comfort I find in hearing you, man, like you, you don't understand the comfort. Like I would have anxiety and I would just listen to you and it would all go away. All of it. Like it would just fully go away. When I hear your voice, you just give me so much hope, so much confidence in myself. So I'm truly speaking out of my heart when I say thank you. And on behalf of everyone, thank you so much. And I don't know what you decide to do after November, but no matter what, we're going to miss you. And I promise you, because I know myself and I know my ability, I am going to make it. And I promise you that your work will go into good things. I will help people. I will help my family and help the poor people I don't know, because you taught us that we're all brothers and sisters and we all should be helping each other. So truly, truly, thank you for everything you have done, man. Uh, thank all. you. Well said and well deserved. Can I also say something? Well deserved. Sorry, kid. Um, then, bro. Do do? Yeah, no. How are you doing, yeah. kid? Thank you. Thank you so much. First of all, oh. um, just wanted to say, it's quite ironic because you know. All, throughout my trading career, you know, I started trading five years ago when I was 21. And throughout my trading career, you know, I've heard this and that about ICT, do ICT this, ICT that. I never really looked into it, right? And it's just funny because last month or a couple months ago, I ran into Kit on the space. And I, I obviously, Kit, you remember I thought you were ICT, of course, right? Yeah, um, I know. I, 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 I slapped that down. You know that. <laughs> because I didn't know about ICT, you know, who ICT was. So it was just ironic. Kit was on that space then. It, you know, dropped some gems, well, a lot of gems, was very humble down to earth, and that, that kind of opened my mind, and so I thought, wait a second, you know, these ICT guys are not really what I'm hearing from all these people, you know, what you mentioned about them being a cult, you know, them thinking they're the only kind of traders that are out there, this and that. So that was the first, you know, real introduction I got to ICT, and, you know, the last couple of months I've been doing a lot of studying on the concepts. Obviously, I'm not, you know, I'm nowhere near as advanced as most of the guys in here who have ICT. In T TWP, um, is there anything yeah. you can do with your audio? Oh, sure, way you can prove it. Take out, take out those. Is it better fucking now? things? Oh my god! Is it better now? Oh my! Yes. Yeah. Fucking AirPods. Oh are killing shoot! Me, yeah. Bro. All right, my go fault. ahead. All right. Um. Yeah. No. No. Sorry. I'm. I'm traveling for soccer soon, so I was, you know, listening to you guys while packing my stuff and everything. But anyway, so yeah. No, just to fast forward the story, yeah, listening to Kit, first of all, kind of got me an introduction to ICT. A few other guys showed me some videos. I started reading, studying the concepts. You know, like I said, I've been trading five years, but I never really understood how, you know, ICT worked. And then just to listen to you speak today, you know, you're humble, you're empathetic, you're, you're, you're teaching us, you're open-minded. It's funny because you're so down to earth and so approachable that I'm just so shocked that I never looked into it this much, you know. And like, I'm, like I said, I'm grateful because, you, what you mentioned is really true, you know, what you addressed about the ICT community is really true because, you know, there's, there's so much to learn, there's so much to do in the stock market, but it's so difficult to overcome your challenges, your losses, because, you know, in this day and age, you know, you have all this social media which helps you, but it can also, you know, hold you back. When you have a space like this where people come, they share their thoughts, you see they have a similar mindset, you know, for the beginner traders, that's, that's a dream. You know, when someone's so approachable and easy to talk to, someone possesses a warm, you know, welcoming demeanor, 
it puts you at ease. So I'm, I'm happy that you're, sh- you're doing this. You know, like I said, I would have loved to have this when I started back, you know, because every failure we hit, we hit it on the head and, and it can be detrimental to your trading journey if you're not, you know, mentally tough, if you're not able to bounce back, you know, but it, obviously it does shape you to become the best trader possible. But like I said, it, it's just so, it's so heartwarming to have someone who's so approachable, who's present in the moment, who's easy to listen to actively. And this is the kind of person you want to engage with. So, like I said, I'm just grateful that you're doing this for the community. As you mentioned, when you started trading, you didn't have all of this. You know, everyone has something, you know, everyone has a lot to learn. But we sometimes we're looking for the right person to learn from. Sometimes we're looking for the person who's going to have the correct perspective, who shares the ideas in the right way. So no, I just want to thank you for being so down to earth, like I said. And, you know, regardless of how you trade, you know, I, I, I'm way different to most of you traders because I trade what support and resistance, you know, different price action market structures. So I'm, I'm still not an ICT trader. Right. But you welcome me in the community. You, I'm learning from you. You know, this week was one of my best weeks of this year. Again, I trade what I trade. It doesn't mean that it's wrong. It's right. The most important thing is that I'm disciplined, that I make money. So, yeah, I'm just I'm just grateful. I'm just telling you that, you know, you coming up here showing how self-aware you are, recognizing emotion, sharing your thoughts, you know, your beliefs, all that stuff is so, so refreshing to hear. And yeah, I just wanted to say thank you because this is my first interact, first interaction with you, the actual ICT. And of course, I've been interacting with Kit a lot of the past few months. So yeah, thank you so much for uh, everything and uh, hope everything goes well with your son as well. It's also interesting to hear from a, from a son's perspective. Thank you, TWP. Hello, can I say we have kind something? of intuitively opened up the floor. We are taking some of your thoughts into sense. There's a lot of you guys here. We want to hear from from you guys. Um, the the adulation is a thing. Again, let's respect let's respect it. And um, I understand it might be your first time having an opportunity to speak with the ICT or to be heard directly from the ICT. But understand this space and this form, it's just about traders getting together, talking about life, and hanging out. So I really want to keep that perspective in, um, in line with where we're at. And as much uh, as I, I do, what's that? Yeah, uh, I was gonna say I do have a question for uh, Michael about the charts. If um, he would like to answer it, of course. I don't know if that was the topic. Uh, we can go to. uh, we'll, we'll we'll see if he wants to answer it or not. Otherwise, go I'll. Ahead. Uh... Go ahead, you can. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Thank you so much. So. Um, in the past six months, obviously, I just even studied more and more, understood your concept, and it's not that I am not profitable at all and it's not that uh my my ability is not good i'm getting there but uh i understand liquidity very good i said session liquidity very good now i understand how the intra intraday like the one minute uh how it works before a run how it takes out liquidity on both sides and stuff like that i understand how pd arrays work and your timing of the sessions i understand all that and i love your silver bullet model for some reason i understand all that and it's not that i don't make money but i can't seem to put it all in one model for the silver bullet, like a written model. Is there a way you can go on that? I, I, I'm sure you've said it before, and um, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry if if um, if I say this, but like, yeah, is there a way you could, when it comes to the sessions, uh, the P, uh, the like the sessions liquidity, how it takes it out and put it with the PD rays and everything to put it all into one model, the silver bullet. If you were to take a approach like trying to figure out what's the highest probability for the direction of the week and whatever those targets are you're aiming for for the week until they're met, until they're reached, you stay with that idea for the beginning basis of each individual narrative for individual sessions and daily bias as a, as a default because of that. If you use previous day's highs and lows, which are – they don't hide from you. I mean, they're 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 right there for everybody to see. Uh, that was very the, the, the very first thing I taught on baby pips to to focus on for forex trading. You never run out of setups like that. And if you go back and look at the daily chart, every single trading day, the bias, whether you know it beforehand or after, 
in the beginning, you don't know what it is. So to teach yourself how to grow in your understanding of where to aim for each day, what is it more likely to aim for? The previous day's high or the previous day's low? And or the day before it, high or low? Or the day before it, high or low? So in other words, you're looking at the high and lows of the last three days. That's exactly what I introduced first on Baby Pips. If you use those six levels, okay, it's, it's three highs and three lows, which one has been traded with a fair value gap? The one that creates one or trades to it and creates a fair value gap, and it allows you to move in sync with what you thought was going to happen for the weekly, like where is it going to go on the weekly chart? Is it likely to expand mostly higher or is it expanding mostly lower? If you're trying to focus on shorts, okay, it, it would go without saying that you're going to try to see a move to yesterday's low or the low prior to yesterday or the low three days ago. And using the 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock or the 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock or 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock or 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock in the morning or 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock in the morning or 7 o'clock to 8.30 in the morning, all of those are opportunities for you to look for that, that simple silver bullet model. Over time, with experience, you're going to determine that every single hourly candle can be traded and treated the same way as a daily range because everything is fractal. And by aiming for the previous hours high or low, framing it with that mindset, you can start getting high frequency trading algorithm entries using a silver bullet model for a 15 or 30 second entry or fair value gap. So I could literally talk to you for the rest of today and still not really scratch the surface of answering it, in my opinion, the most the most significant manner of responding to what your questions ask. I understand what you're asking, but there's a plethora of examples on how to do that. And I just gave you new ones here just in a couple sentences. It's a matter of finding the one that fits you. That's why there's so many things that have to be brought from your own personal perspective and your personality into trading. Can you be in front of the charts at that specific time? Can you trade a setup that would not look like everything else I've shown so far because I do other models and like I'm going to, I have a video that's, that's been rendering while I've been here with you live. Um, I, I'm going to upload it here in a moment, but I'm teaching a new PD array in there and what I actually traded yesterday in non-farm payroll. So if you understand that you are given the opportunity to bring your personal perspective, your personality, and how you're going to allow your trading to be form-fitted with the concepts, not take the concepts and form-fit it to you. You have to bring your personality to it. You have to allow whatever it is that makes you feel comfortable looking at price and how it uh, invites you to engage with it. I have so many concepts, so many ways to get in that same scenario. But you just have to determine what it is you're trying to do. Are you a reversal trader? Are you a contrarian trader? Do you like to trade with trends that just have been obvious for a long period of time on the four-hour and daily chart? If you know that it's likely to go down to a level that's you know 200 handles away for an index future or 300 pips for a forex pair, if that's what you're really focusing on, like if that's what the whole model is based around and you have the – the commitment to, to hold for something like that and stay with that idea, then using any time frame less than an hour, you can do a 15 minute fair value gap with, you know, with the silver bullet mindset. Silver bullet is not simply a matter of limit, limiting it to a specific time. All I've done was take very specific generic times where order flow is going to be one sided. That's what's occurring there because the algorithm is going to start spooling and, and delivering price one-sidedly. And because its nature is to perform that way, if you look for a fair value gap in those specific time windows where the beginning and the ending of it is, it can't hide from you. It literally cannot hide from you. It's, it's a matter of you knowing what you're likely to draw to at that given time of day, whether it be London, PM session, AM session. It matters not. But you have to warm up to the idea of whatever it is you're trying to do, any one of those particular times of the day, that's where you should bloom where you're planted. Plant yourself right there and say, okay, I don't care what ICT and the rest of his crew does and what their trades are. I don't care about that. I don't care what new PD array or what model I release in October. I don't give two spits about whatever I talk about in the future in a book. 
I'm trying to nail down one thing so I can start getting good at doing one thing right now. You start with when can, when can you get in the, in the charts? Because if you can't figure that out or determine and settle in on that, nothing's going to work for you. But once you settle in with that, then you have to determine, okay, where's the likely draw on liquidity? I mean, that, that's, the, that's the whole basis of what it is I'm teaching because if you can get to that and you won't always be correct, are you in a state of mind that allows for that imperfection? Because many times in the beginning, people don't want to accept the fact that they may be less than 50% accurate. And that's normal for someone that's learning a new skill. And over time, you'll get to that 50-50. And eventually, over years, you'll get to 70 and higher. But you'll still have losing trades. And you'll be in a time when you think that you know where the market's going to go. Draw to. I'll give you a perfect example. I was very confident yesterday that the gold market was going to sweep out that uh, low. I literally told my youngest son, I said, I think that it's going to take that low today. And you don't know this until he's saying it, but I was wrong in his eyes. He watched me say something and, and outline something that didn't come to fruition. So do I throw out everything because that didn't pan out? Do I tell him, well, don't worry about learning this now because that one incident where I did it wrong, my expectation wasn't seen in the delivery of price. The model, therefore, should be thrown away. No. So um, I don't know how, how you engage price. I don't know what it is that you're specifically looking for and how you have been trying to frame bias and, and where the liquidity would be for the silver bullet to even pan out. But silver bullet is just a way for me to describe a return to a very small, insignificant piece of price action that's easily identifiable, which is the fair value gap on a very, very small time frame during a time when it's going to run for 15 to 30 minutes minimum in, in one sidedness in price delivery. So really, if you understand what I just said, there is lots of silver bullets throughout the course of a 24 hour period. And if you're using seconds charts, like 15 seconds, 30 seconds, man, there's dozens of them every day, dozens of them. And the only thing I've tried to do is limit your focus because so many people have a hard time trying to figure out, well, I don't know what set up to do. I don't know what PD array. Okay, forget that. Here's the PD array. Here's the one little thing, that one little cog that you have to use. Focus just on this. But only look for it between this beginning time and this ending time. And practice with that until you get really, really good at doing that one thing. Some of you will never want to do anything else because it makes you your money. And that does not mean you fail. It doesn't mean you're a subpar student. It doesn't mean that... You know, my other stuff doesn't work. This means that you've discovered yourself and you've discovered what works for you and you're content with enough because with enough, the heavy lifting is done with money management. You can take a small little cookie cutter approach, very simple, small little idea of what I've taught here with Silver Bullet. You can turn that into a fortune. It's all how you manage the money and you submit the time. I, I literally was telling Cameron this the other day. I said, you know, when you swing for the fences and you're trying to do your model, what you were messing up with is you see how when it starts to run real quick, you you take the limit orders off. And you think it's going to keep, keep running and go like 200 handles. And you abandon the easy objective of getting to your target, getting paid and moving to the sidelining and letting yourself be content with, I made this work for me. And then learn by experience that this is how many times over the course of three months, six months, a year, this is how many times I did that very thing. And yes, 50 to 100 times more, it went way beyond where I got out at. That's encouragement that you were doing the right thing. But until you do something and get a measurable baseline and prove to yourself that you can be disciplined doing just that, you won't get to these big slam your grand slam home runs where you're doing the, the full daily range because that's what he wants to do. He wants to catch those big moves, but he's trying to skip over something. So I don't, I, I'm taking a great deal of liberty and I'm trying not to be offensive in, in replying to you. I don't know what you've done and I don't know how you yourself, and, and please don't be offended by what I'm about to say, Kit, or anyone else that's listening. I don't want this to be one of those sit down and ask, you know, dear Abby, like I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to have a one-on-one -on -one mentorship with no you doubt. in five minutes now. Because, first of all, we won't get through anything, and it will alienate everyone else listening. But I'm trying to be inclusive to that way everyone that may have a question or something similar along the same vein. You have to have 
a target. You have to have an approach. What are you framing the draw on liquidity? Are you using um, a day where you think that it dropped early in the day, but eventually it's going to have a higher close or a higher high in the day? Okay, then that sets the, the framework for you probably avoiding the morning session. Don't do anything in the morning session and set your, your sights on the PM uh, 2 o'clock to 3 and or 3 to 4. There's a silver bullet in there. Okay, it's going to be there. But what are you going to be aiming for? In that case, if you thought that the morning session dropped was just the making the low of the day and then the PM session is going to just expand going higher, going into the close, well, it goes without saying that you're going to be looking for expansion in the afternoon. So what would you be looking for? Well, was yesterday's high, high higher than where you've traded today, intraday? If it is, that's what you aim for. That's your draw on liquidity. And if you're using that as your basis, okay, wonderful. You're looking for 5, 10, 15 handles, whatever your silver bullet target is. I don't want to try to force it into just only being 5. But in the beginning, I believe everybody should be striving for just 5 handles. Because if you can consistently prove it to yourself that there is a there's a probability behind it, and it's measurable that you can do it if you commit yourself to it. And then you have a track record that you've journaled. This is what I thought was going to happen. This is where I entered it. This is where I framed the risk. This is where I tried to get out at. And this is how many times it panned out for me. And this is how many times that it didn't pan out for me. And I'm still going to stick with it over time. I'm going to get better at it. And then after a while, when it's comfortable for you, but not in a hurry, don't be in a rush to do it. Go from trying to aim for five to ten handles. And then live there for a little while, a couple months. Don't try to don't try to force it, because you literally can change the entire trajectory of your life. Much like going back to what I was saying about my son, I said, Cameron, when you look at these trades, you don't realize that what you're doing, a couple hundred hours here and a couple hundred hours there, per day, like they are the building blocks of you having something that's going to yield thousands of dollars per day, thousands of dollars per trade. But you have to allow for that to finally settle in on you. And you say, okay, well, I'm not going to be fearful. I'm not going to be in a rush to chase that price run. I, I, I thought it was going to go up that level, but I wasn't ready to take a trade. But now it started running, and I missed the entry. So let me just get in and get on board right now because I can get those 12 remaining handles or pips. That's the mistakes he's making. So he's demanding. He's absolutely precise, and he has to know exactly how far it's going to go. And that messes with everybody in the beginning, no matter what you trade with. You, you, you get caught up in the excitement of that price action running, or you think it's running. And then when you chase it, it pulls back on you and it crushes you. Because he only has a $1,000 uh, daily max drawdown, he still is trying to do two contracts when I told him one. I don't know if you're doing that either. I don't know if the other listeners that would have an opportunity to sit here and say something, would they be honest and say, yeah, I do that too? Or... Are they not doing it? Is it something else? So there's a lot of things that would, you know, create the difficulty for this, and I, I, that's why I talk a lot because I try to cover all the things that I could imagine where I went through and what would arise by me saying what I just said in either a Twitter space or whatever I've talked about in a recorded lecture. I know what would be prompted most of the time by me saying something or touching on something, and I also know that. I won't have the sufficient time or bandwidth to talk about it sufficiently enough to satisfy so I don't touch it there and I'll treat it as its own individual topic. So I say all that to say that I don't know if I can adequately answer you in a succinct manner where you'll feel satisfied and feel like you've got something from it. The only thing I can tell you is keep working with some of the things I just mentioned here and what I've already taught and what I teach on in all the other videos because it's not like a – it, it, there isn't one res one recipe that's going to fit you, and that recipe that you find profitable, if you try to put it in the hands of 12 other people, the likelihood of you having three others do it just like you and find satisfaction in it is highly unlikely. It's highly unlikely because everybody's going to bring their own personality to it and what you're willing to do. And some of you are in you're built in high rollers. Like you you want to be a high roller. Like you want to be you know. Uh, Another Tom Hugard, like you, you just you don't give a shit. You're just going to swing for the fences and you, you'll deal with the drawdown and you'll figure out how to fix it later on. But right now I'm trying to do as much as I can every single time I get in front of the charts and others are going to be very timid and they're going to be like, I, I really don't want to risk a lot. And I'm OK with getting there over 10 years. 
So it, it's a very complex thing as a teacher to try to provide a, a, a very detailed roadmap. So what I do is I present different approaches how I can use the information to try to help you specialize on what it is that you're trying to do, whether it be an intraday scalp, whether it be a day trading where you're trying to do the full daily range. All of that is silver bullet. This is a matter of where you're placing it and what you're aiming for. And I've done a great deal. Like, for instance, the uh, One Model for Life teaching. That teaching right there, if I had that in the first six months of my trading, I would have avoided blowing out at least six, six contra uh, not contracts, real accounts. I would have avoided doing that very thing because I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what I was aiming for. I was trading for targets within a pattern that I believed was in price when they weren't that wasn't there. You know, I was being confused and you know led astray by the chaos of price action structure versus this is where liquidity is. This is where inefficiencies are. And where are those times of the day that that liquidity would be considered impactful? That lesson, that lesson that I gave in that, it's not a model of specific trading. It's a model of determining how you go in and you look for the liquidity that's mattering right now. No matter what time of day, wouldn't you go in the London session, the morning session of New York or the PM session, I've taught you and you see me going out there doing it with a real account. I go after very specific elements of liquidity above or below the marketplace or inefficiencies using the very logic that I taught in that lecture. So I guess the easiest direct response would be the, the way you improve is use the logic that I have taught in that one and then associate everything else I've mentioned here. Hopefully it was insightful for you i i just want to build on what you're saying michael real quickly here to the folks listening i mean ict is here and the breadth and depth of work that he has provided on his youtube channel for free and available to you these are ingredients each one is an ingredient for you to utilize within a rule set and or framework that you construct as the trader. So when you come in and you ask, what's this ingredient do? Or, I mean, not that you meant it in a disrespectful way, but what are the rule sets to the silver bullet? Motherfucker, watch the first five minutes of the silver bullet video and you'll see what the rule set is for fucking silver bullet. So coming up here and asking what's this one ingredient that I need to utilize to bake my cake to find consistency and profitability motherfucker go watch the YouTube and pay the fuck attention one trade setup I'll tell you what I use real quick one trade setup for life I love it session liquidity and wogs and dogs I can't get enough they look like 3d fucking goggles for me personally OTE the fib Oh my God, quarterly levels. Holy shit. Keying these on to, for me, and I mentioned I utilize DR ranges. I don't think ICT who's here has a problem with me utilizing other logic or confluences within the ingredients, the universal ingredients, the algorithmic principles and theories that he's outlined, not in one series, ladies and gentlemen. In fucking every single thing he's ever taught on YouTube. So to have the opportunity to talk to him and ask him to regurgitate what he's mindfully presented in a very logical, formulated fashion for you to apply however the fuck you want. You get to be the trader. He's giving you the ingredients. He's given you the ingredients. All of us are going to see price differently. So thank you, Michael, for being as in-depth and detailed and dropping sauce, keeping it saucy uh, in the conversation here. But motherfuckers, if you're listening to me, this ain't it. This isn't personal mentorship by Michael. You want that, you go to his YouTube page and you can you can get that there. And you better be taking some fucking notes and sharpening your goddamn pencil. If I could, If I could say something real quick. Pretty um, please. I, I didn't take his inquiry like that. I, I, I think if 
like I mentioned earlier, you know, if I would have had an opportunity to have uh, asked Larry Williams something, um, I had the belief and such uh, high regard for him that if I were have perhaps in the presence of him, ask him, you know, say, hey, look, you know, um, I, I've seen you talk about how you know, the bond market does this and therefore the S&P should do that. And then I hear you talk about you know, your RSI, you know, not RSI, but your uh, Williams percent R is like the half of the um, stochastic that George Lane didn't invent, by the way. And I, I, I would like very much for you to help me determine what period Williams percent R I should use if I was using this as a model. What would you what would you advocate that I would begin with and start with? Um, I, I don't think I don't think what the, the, the gentleman was asking was so grossly outside of the normal. I just didn't want everybody that would maybe have the opportunity and I didn't think we were going to have that anyway. I thought we were just going to talk. But I, you know, if you want to let people come in and, and – and No, no we can talk, brother. I, I like you and I talking. So y'all put your hands down. This is an opportunity for Michael to have a conversation. And we're, we're here hanging out. And uh, understand that we're, I, I'm, I'm picking up what you're putting down. And typically this is an open forum. We like to have – a lot of discussion, but uh, this is an opportunity for Michael to hang out with you and with me. And uh, I just, I like to keep re respect within what the wishes are and the chance and opportunity for us to talk, my man. So yes, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be removing the, uh, the speaker tags and we are going to continue having a conversation and um, that way it can be a little bit more controlled, a little bit more directed, and it could be uh, hopefully of value with respect to, uh, again, the, the, the man himself. So um, you're absolutely right, Michael. That's what this is. This is us, us talking. And um, – as you're saying, folks like to come in and they want the opportunity. And I, I know you'll be here again and and um, they'll get an opportunity to ask questions. And, and hopefully we can, you know, directly or indirectly answer them or, or, or hear that out. So go ahead and turn off your requests, everybody, and uh, recognize what what this is and, and what it's being asked to be and uh, enjoy the conversation. Enjoy the conversation. I, I hope I was, I hope I was helpful to the, to the guy. Bro, you're super asking. helpful. You cannot open your mouth and people not have a sharp pencil with a notebook. They're taking notes. <laughs> so yes, you were helpful. And I'm, just the guy that likes to try and pick up the vibe and carry it. And I don't have a problem with trying to pick up what you're putting down and interpret it in my own two cents. Angelo, stop, stop, stop waving. I'm not bringing you up here, brother. Uh, I know you have something valuable that you would like to ask, but is that the same Angelo that was sending me a text message the other day. <laughs> it is, it is, it is the Angelo. Yes, that is the Angelo that uh, actually he was talking to you, and he did ask specifically about your boy, and you replied to him, uh, pretty much. Thank you for asking, and that's the same Angelo. Uh, that's it. He's an Italian guy. He he moved from Italy to uh, New York recently, and uh, what is nice. Michael about this community is getting the opportunity to get to know the name and the story behind the profile. And, um, and again, that's all, this, this is all forged in your shadow. And I believe we're trying, I'm trying in being here to just pick up what you're putting down in what I consider advanced concepts having some form of an increase. I've never felt more of an increase within the market than after meeting you in April. You could say it's divine, random people reaching out to me, random conversations, 
the universe, God, God's hand. And I'm forever grateful. And within that, I like to try to be a community, but also be a trader. And I try and offer some form of insights and echoing a lot of, you know, whether it's a fib level that you provided in, in one of the episodes earlier this year or specific, you know, conversation alpha that you drop within a series. I just try and echo that. And, and I think people resonate with that and they, they are given an opportunity to kind of ask, do you think he meant this? And they, you know, I, th- I know for a fact, a lot of folks are kind of starstruck you being here and they would love the opportunity to engage. So I, I'm, I'm Angelo just, Oh, his question has to be adjusted and set. That's so funny. Has what? I'm sorry. I couldn't hear what you said. He had a question, and it, I only say this because Angelo is in my uh, WhatsApp conversation. But he had a question, and I think this is actually a good question. Uh, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind asking you this. But the importance of the B adjust, the B dash A D J within daily, daily settlement. Yes, the daily, the daily yeah. settlement. And what your thoughts and two cents are on that. And I, I've heard you address this before, mm-hmm. but it, it's coming from Angelo. And uh, I want to respectfully uh, ask you the question because I think it will help. A, a lot of folks have the same question. I I have been toggling it both on and off, and I refer to both settings. So if there's something that I would consider a PDRA that is – noteworthy or a specific open or close I'll have them both in my notes let's have a look a little yellow notepad I showed the other day when some assholes were trying to say I live in a shack uh, I, I wish I wouldn't have done it now because I, I, I can't take it back once I put it out on the internet but I walked out of my trading room but before I did I panned through and showed the monitors you probably saw a little yellow notepad there that's the that's that's the thing that I'm using that's that's what I'm having to work with. There there's specific levels, and when I'm toggling the daily settlement price on or off, I'm annotating those price levels, and I'm I, I don't I don't note them like okay with it toggled on it's this level, and with it toggled off it's this level. I just note both of them, so it gives me a perspective where they might be a factor for someone else looking at price, and it may impact sentiment based on those ideas. So it's not like it's a one set of this is the only way of doing it. So there are times where I'm very dogmatic about concepts. I'll say you don't want to use this. You want to use that. Or for instance, like the opening price. OK, there's there's two opening prices that in Forex I talked that were predominantly just those two, which is the midnight opening price. Whatever the first opening price is at midnight, New York local time, you want that and you want the opening um, when when trading starts. 5 p.m. and 4x yes. then, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So by having that, you know, that flexibility of toggling that on and off, I don't want anybody – I, I don't know where I – I know I answered it and I addressed it somewhere, but I just, for the life of me, I apologize. I can't recover where I said it, but it's that way for the folks that are hearing it. No, that I toggle that on and off, and I get the recorded prices based on whether it's toggled on and toggled off. That's why sometimes when you're looking at it, um, sometimes it looks like I have it highlighted for the express purposes of showing what I'm showing at that moment. When other times I don't have it toggled on and I'm not referring to anything specific about the chart. So I can see where it would might cause confusion, but you just caught me in between where I'm recording both of those readings, but I refer to them collectively, not in and of themselves separate and one's better than the other. I just simply have them toggled on and off to get a reading for what those measurements and those price levels are. So hopefully it removed any mystery around it because it really not there really isn't that much about it. No, I, I think that's an excellent point. I think that's an excellent point. And he he's he's quickly he he's texting me and saying thank you uh, no for your response. So if you guys do have a questions, I will peruse through the comments and I could potentially cherry pick some of these questions and ask them. 
to Michael and uh, that way it can be a little bit more of controlled conversation versus just anyone coming up and saying any old thing and, and, and us not being able to kind of direct the conversation uh, and, and valuing and respecting his time. Cause again, <laughs> all of you are referencing some form of his life's work. So he can refer to any and all of this. He, he, he can be verbose on any one of these concepts, right? Cause there is so. Yeah. If, if you, if you open the floor to people calling in and, and saying, Hey, look, can I ask you this personally? Um, it's going to put me in a position where I literally will not be satisfied no matter how much I talk about it, because I'm going to immediately place myself in a situation where if this were me, like I would want this person to number one, give me time, acknowledge my interest, be respectful and, and, and do your best to try to answer. And if I, if, if I was to make myself available for that, like we would be here all night long. Cause I mean, you see how it is. Like I, I, I keep going on and on and on. And I feel like I didn't do enough to answer the gentleman's question. And it's bothering me. <laughs> like, I, well, he I, was I apologetic to me. No, it's funny. Cause he's like, sorry, ICT concepts. If I understood wrong, but I heard, uh, uh, but I heard we were here talking as traders. So I thought I could ask him a simple question. If I overstepped, I'm sorry. You didn't. Me saying, listen, motherfucker, it's just me talking. So don't, you didn't take it personally. I don't take it personally. No one took it personally. Uh, we're just, I'm trying to conduct this with the utmost respect for Michael's time and valuing and appreciating him being here. Uh, can, for can one, you ask, I, can you ask ahead. him if, if I was helpful in my response at all? Because I'm, I'm, I'm bothered because I don't know if it was helpful to him. Uh, I mean, uh, he can respond here. Jad, respond under your uh, under your original comment. Your question was very good, and thank you for asking because we are always learning. So, I definitely, definitely see the value in, in folks asking questions. Uh, and I want to just go through. I mean, I can peruse some of these comments and. Yeah, anyway, yeah, J Jimmy, uh, Mr. 930 makes a very good point. Motherfucker is a term of endearment, at least at least an hour. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I've heard ICT, uh, I mean, Michael, there was one time you were talking in one of your spaces. You were in Florida on vacation. It had to be in April, um, shortly after we, we had spoke. And you were in your car. And you use the term of endearment like motherfucker. It's like that. It's our age. It's like this motherfucker's trying to come up to the car. Or I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> but it's funny because there are folks that are of our generation and utilizing the term motherfucker. Don't get oversensitive. It, it is yeah. ultimately a term of endearment. Yeah. So <laughs> do you remember that you were in Florida and there's like some guy that like almost came up to your. I think as a. I, I thought of a few times where that actually happened. I had a guy <laughs> almost run over top me with his pickup truck and I had my vet and I was taking a drive trying to do a Twitter space, which was not so smart, but I had a road raid incident where like, I thought I was going to get out of the car and whip his ass. And I was like, man, that was on live. Like I just lost myself right there on live. That's the first thing that came to mind. That's what I thought you were talking about. But as I'm hearing, I remember what you're saying. And it was, I was in a parking lot of a shopping center. And the, the guy was like walking up and I thought he's going to like, he, many of you don't know. I mean, there's one dickhead that has had people, you know, follow me around taking pictures and changing the pictures and changing this and Photoshopping this and all this garbage with that person aside, I've actually had other people that gen at least from what I can tell other people that have come to my house, literally knocked on my door, rang the doorbell, uh, we we spoke to them through the ring ring phone you know, doorbell saying look you know um, we're really not interested in in having any conversation or meeting with you and they said well you know, can you just let me get a picture with you I really would like to meet you and I had people sitting outside my neighborhood at the exit point not right in front of my house because you can see where there's a car because it's pretty open out here but when you leave the main uh, neighborhood they're they're down there parked and when I pass them or whenever my wife has passed them, they follow. 
And then when we get up to a red light, they're they're like beeping a horn, saying, "Hey, hey, look, hey, you know, can you let me get a picture of you? Thank you so much. You know, thank you, ICT. This, and it, it's just, I want to say this, and please don't think of me as a dick for saying this, but don't fucking come around me like that, okay? I don't know who you are. My family doesn't know who you are, okay? I don't want to hurt you, and I don't want my family to be afraid. I understand that you might think I'm something special. I'm not. I'm just somebody out here that's sharing on the internet. I want to be part of the community, and I don't want to be treated like a celebrity. And I don't want my family to be fearful of people that might think of me as something that I'm not. I'm not a celebrity. I'm not something special. I'm not somebody that's special. And nobody will give a fuck if you get a picture with me standing next to you. It's not that big of a deal. So I, I really want them that have that mindset. If I could just meet you, that's like you'll be you'll be uh, disappointed. Never try to meet your heroes. Never, never, never do that. Never meet your heroes. OK, I'm a flawed man. I have character flaws still. And I'm not going to be comfortable if you were to pin me down and say, hey, can I talk to you for a minute? Can I get a picture? I won't want to do that with you. And it'll, it'll seem probably obtuse and rude because I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what your intentions are. I don't know if you want to hurt me or my family. I don't know what it is that you're you're doing. And in your mind, you're, you're thinking, I, I probably would love this opportunity to meet someone like a fan. I don't look at any of you as a fan. I look at all of you as a family member. I'm trying to instill into all of you things that I wish I had, and I want to see what you do with it. I'm not trying to cultivate this atmosphere where you all treat me like a celebrity and put me on a pedestal and then want to invade my personal life. I would not be comfortable with that at any time. And sending me gifts. I don't want any more gifts. Stop mailing shit to me. Stop sending me stuff. Okay, it, It's too much. It's uncomfortable. My wife is uncomfortable by it. And my, my, I, my daughter literally had to move out of this fucking state for this very reason. She's got anxiety. She's tore up all the time. She's constantly thinking someone's following her when I know nobody's following her. Nobody knows where the fuck she's at. OK, but this whole like trying to get closer to me type thing, it makes me uncomfortable. It makes my wife extremely uncomfortable. That's the number one reason why she said, listen, your fucking ass is off in November. It's done. Pick the date, and that's the date it's going to be. That's why it's the 11th. Nobody's pushing me out but her. She's scared. Too many people have been in, 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 intruded in our lives for all the stupidest fucking reasons. Like I'm some kind of MVP fucking player on a sports team. I'm nobody. Like I'm literally just an average guy. I have something I've shared, and I want to sit back now and let everybody else have fun with it and, and live their life with it. I don't want people trying to invite me to special events. And I've had literally so many people reach out for things like go on teaching circuits. We'll play. We'll pay for you to fly here. We'll put you up at this. We will pay you money and do this and do that. I don't want any of that stuff. I don't want to be anything more than I already am. And I want to reduce. So. Bro, for what it's worth, I think you coming here. And engaging with the community on your terms and with it just being you and I being a conversation. And if folks do have a question, they could ask in the comments. I think this makes you very approachable to the community. You can hear from them. They can hear from you. And I mean, you have been on this elusive pedestal and you've had to be based on your personality and the, in the way you've delivered content through having the private mentorship through marketing and then through and where and how you're exiting right i don't mm -hmm. think there's any fault to that i'm just trying to like see it from both sides right i get your point you engaging with folks on your terms or giving them the opportunity to engage with you bro i mean i i personally think this is a great platform that has been kind of curated for something form fit for something like this yeah so i just i just wanted to have the opportunity to like really like you and i when we talked i you know i, I told you this like the, this this is it, it's 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 very concerning for my family like if, it, if i was a single guy and i was younger like i i wanted this stuff when i was younger and i told you this when we were when we were having our discussion i said I, I wanted this whole big fanfare about me like i wanted it 
because it made me feel significant where I didn't feel significant as a child. I didn't have all that support structure around me and I didn't have the, the, the approval of my own parents. So it would, it would always be a passion of mine to try to get people to number one, recognize me. And I can tell you, some of you younger folks out there that think that you want this, even though it's not that big of a deal, like I, in the grand scheme of things, I'm still nothing. But the little bit that I have, it's extremely uncomfortable. Like, I don't know when I go out in public, if there's going to be someone who's going to come up to me and say, hey, can you sign this book? Can you sign my journal? Can you get a picture with me? And if if you could just place yourself in that situation where you have a wife that has never had the full attention of your entire marriage because of these markets, these, these markets have been my mistress and she's been playing second fiddle to it. And she's finally pinned me down and said, listen, like we will divorce. That's the terms. That's what she laid down for me. So that's why I'm telling you, the people that are making side bets that I'm not going to go anywhere, I'm fucking gone. <laughs> I love my wife. I love my family. I'm literally unplugging because I want to give her what she's deserving of, what my family's deserving of. But my concern is this. I'm afraid when I stop making myself available online, more of you that want to meet me for the silliest of reasons, because that's really what it is. Right now, it's just because, you know, you, you think – there's something special about that experience. There's nothing special about that experience. And I don't want to be rude to you if you were to pin me down in public because I would not give you the time of day if you tried to do that. I would turn away and walk away from you. And I don't want to have that experience for you or me. And I wanted to convey this to you know, to people out there because I, I don't like what it feels like to be like this. And if I was to get bigger and more popular, it would be really detrimental to my relationship with my wife. And I don't want that. So it's I, I probably very hard. Sentiments, brother. I, I really do. I try and take our personal conversation and let them know. I think you have every right to and you deserve the right to be a dad and a husband without all this fanfare of randos. And you don't know who's hating and who's loving and I'm sure that has more than anything scared the bejesus out of your family members. They're like, who's that creepy dude? And then you get those dumb motherfuckers that are talking shit and hating and, and you get to deal with that as well. And I, I know that's hurtful. And I don't think a lot of people understand just how hurtful that is because you're very vulnerable, bro. You're very, very vulnerable and you're very, very open. And then people try and utilize that vulnerability to attack you. And I, I just want to say as a student, as a friend, as someone that can empathize and relate, that sucks, bro. And it's just the fact of the matter. It's what the nature of social media is, right? Like not just social media, but when you become a global icon whether you want to accept that or not your impact that's the word impact from your increase that you've shared with others now has put you at a level that makes you uncomfortable and incorrectly attacked and i understand and i want other folks to understand You've got every right to just be a dad and just be a husband and request and, and and respond to the requests of the most important people in your life. And I think that's the that's what you're doing more than anything. And I like echoing that from our conversation way back when to even now. Like, guys, chill. Like it's not okay if you like, value, and appreciate Michael then take something with his lessons and his concepts and do something with them and put yourself on front street with doing something with them. And then more importantly, try and help other people because that's the ultimate lesson. I just want to echo what you're saying, brother. I really do. Do you remember, do you remember when we were talking and I, I told you that I was wrestling with feeling guilty about leaving? Cause I, I feel like it's 
going to be viewed as selfish, like I'm, I'm being selfish, when I've tried to do everything I possibly have done to, to, to be anything but selfish. But I have a wife, you know, I have, I have kids that I did not spend much time with. And these markets and the things I did with people on the internet, you know, not only I talk about just mentorship, but like all the time, like I would be answering emails back on baby pips and I, I loved it. Like I love it. And it's going to be an adjustment for me not to be doing it anymore. So I, I'd wrestle with that guilt of should I feel this way? I, I'm very, very passionate about it. But if it's going to be a choice of staying married or doing this, I'm staying married. It, I mean, respectfully, I mean, I want to say and I say respectfully, respecting our private conversation. But I told you, having gone through a divorce myself, like for me, my wife resented every time I picked up the phone, every time. And I didn't even have a, you know, a fraction of the following, but it, it had to do with like the markets became to her like a mistress, mm -hmm. right? It was diverting attention and you have the markets as well as even back in the day with baby pips. I, I don't know what the exact numbers were, but you had tens of thousands. I mean, I, I want to say it was like 30, 40, 50,000 people way back when, before it was the global body that it is now to the tune of, of millions between combined socials, right? So I could empathize and relate as a husband that dirty look that my wife would give me just by picking up the phone like, you're, you're not focusing on me, motherfucker. That can't last. Yep. And I feel like that's – I can empathize with you on that and – I've gone through not one wife, but two wives. And I've chose trading in the charts over my relationships with them. And at times I, I'm, I'm very, you know, I regret it. But at other times I say it's the best thing that ever happened to me because it's bringing me more to my real self. So I can... Just like then, I want to say it now again on Front Street. I mean, we, this was the conversation that we were having, right? Like the, yeah. this, this was something I think that's extremely important for folks to really understand the real you, not ICT, the global icon, Michael Huddleston, the man. Mm -hmm. Being Can a father. Talk about some of the things that we did in that conversation, like, like I, I was giving you some questions and I was interested in your responses. And I think, you know, I don't know if you've said it in other, um, maybe you did, I don't know, but you know, I, I kind of like want to do a little bit of, you know, recanting of what, you know, what we discussed, because if we were to close it and this is all there was to discussion that we've had today, um, it, it's going to feel like, well, it, it was kind of flat. It really didn't do too much. I mean, we chit chat a little bit. One guy asked a question and some other person gave some approval and appreciation, which I'm thankful for. But, uh, you know, at the time when we were talking, I was doing interviews and asking folks, you know, how they how they got into trading and, and what was the most difficult things they had to go through while learning. And what what were those things that they leaned on to keep themselves motivated? Because, I mean, you're running a community. OK, you're you are the cheerleader. But who's Kit's cheerleader? Like, what did you do to stay motivated to keep kept you hopped up? keep going forward and that energy that it gave you to be this spearhead, to be a driving force, to encourage other people and to, to lead a community that, that has a like-mindedness about doing these very things. Before you got to that point where you decided to, this is what you wanted to pursue, like what were you leaning on? What did you fall on and, and say, okay, I, I'm weakened at this point, but I'm going to lean against this and I'm going to let myself grow in strength again and i'm gonna go right back in and plow again i'm not gonna be discouraged what were those things for you oh man i had some dumb blind luck within the market i had wins that i couldn't replicate in a million years i just got lucky and i can't i can't say with a straight face that the wins that I had early, I mean, I, I bought Tesla early 
just because my high school buddy was like, we need to buy HSBC, we need to buy Kroger, we need to buy Santander, and we need to buy Tesla. And this was a buddy of mine who had a degree in finance, who went to Hawaii and was trying to become a Navy SEAL and has been a, a lifelong friend to not only me, but my younger brother and his older brother is my daughter's godfather. So like this union of two brothers, two sets of brothers, just that from early days of high school, riding bikes, going to the street fair, first time ever drinking, sneaking the old, old man's alcohol. This guy gets a degree in finance and I'm womanizing and living in, uh, Brazil backpacking and I come back and I work and I have a tip job and the tip job was at a luxury hotel, but I made really good money. And it was like, I was taking all of my tips, my daily tips and saving them. And I was saving them and my brother and my friend are hodlers, you know, hold on for dear life. They still have a, an amazing stock portfolio. Both of them do. And where I was different or where I wanted to be different was I, I made a lot of money on, on buying some of these stocks way before they split. And, you know, then they split and it became a lot of money and we kind of fell into like this windfall and they continued hodling and I wanted to be different. And I got into options and options trading. And I bought some stupid ass course on animal patterns and I spent a ridiculous amount of money on it. And I started following, you know, I saw you on baby pips and, and having had bought this course, I started like this thirst for knowledge of information of the markets. And I started trying to apply the bootleg versions of sh shit that I could find from you to equities. And I paid a ton of attention to ES and VIX within trading different companies in uh, the, the S and P. And so trading, you know, I was in options and, you know, COVID was COVID and I had another windfall and I made a shit ton of money, uh, in days that most people have never made in their life out of the market. And I was, kind of following some signal services, but I was following your, a lot of your concepts for me, OTE and, and the fair value gap. I thought I'd unlocked the markets by measuring fair value gaps and gaps with fibs. And that was for me, what I thought was the answer, but ultimately dealing with options, weekly options, zero day options, it was, I was very inclined to take on risk. I was all about going. I refer to the term affectionately, but I'd say I, I went balls deep on a trade. And where my brother and my best friend were hodlers and they weren't interested in trading, I was like, nope, this is it. This is the answer. This is, this is, how, you, this is how you take money and money works for you. And I started making and losing salaries of what I would in a normal year work an entire year to make. And that would happen in the tune of an afternoon. And um, so I had a windfall from hodling. I got into options and I applied ICT concepts. And for me, back in the day, OTE was it. And I thought measuring gaps and measuring fair value gaps with not just structure, but gaps and fair value gaps with a fib, which I still believe in, but I just got, I couldn't replicate it. I wasn't consistent and I was extremely risk averse. And that was about the time that my daughter was born and that I had my first divorce and, you know, I, I took, I say that was around the time I'm referring to like, cause the timeline has to make sense. The timeline was I bought Tesla and a lot of other stocks. My brother and my friend held, 
I held for a while while I worked. I got a degree. I was an adult learner. I became a construction engineer. I worked in development. I managed funds for the state of Ohio in building schools and school districts. And to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars that were being allocated from tobacco money that the state had won and had a mandate to apply towards underprivileged school districts. And I was on a team of six, very small team, managing an extremely large fund. And so within estimating and construction and development and deploying these these costs, I, I could see these really big numbers. And, and I had to sign pay applications, you know, a $3.5 million pay application to uh, or a contract to a general contractor who then was getting paid hundreds of thousands of dollars monthly based on my progress reports on their schedules. So construction and development was where I started seeing these big numbers and trying to manage shit. Sounds a lot like JCAP. Yeah, I mean, JCAP's my boy. He's honestly one of my best friends. And him and I, within having both lost our fathers and within both having degrees in construction management, I talk to JCAP regularly. I mean, almost daily. I mean, I have a, I mean, I've mentioned before Trader Roundup, the 501c3. Uh, the business 501c3 nonprofit is owned by Jade Cap Rodrigo, his best friend and also a very good friend of mine and myself. So the 501c3 that we have that is called Trader Roundup is Jade Cap, myself and Rod. So I, I have a very close affinity and respect and love for Jade Cap. And, and, and a lot of that's come through his background, his personal challenges um, in, in dealing with death in his family, but then also his approach on trading. So um, I say all of that to say, like kind of getting back to the original question was I had these wins and they were not sustainable. I had this risk, this appetite for risk that was not sustainable. And it, it, it burnt through my relationship with my first wife. I continued working in construction and construction management, construction development as my primary income. But I was and always have been and will always be a London-based trader because being a father and having to take my kid to daycare and having a job and having to work with architects and contractors and owners meant that during New York, I, w I couldn't trade that. The only moves I was going to find, if I was going to find, was waking up super early and focusing on London. And then even studying you, you said there's going to be an army of folks that once they really understand ICT concepts are going to trade London. And I've kind of always thought of myself being – a dad first and foremost and how much of this audience is old enough to be our children your children my children m7 i, I threw as well that similar age all similar age in our outlook on life generation x and i kind of told myself within all of this while i still was happily married to my second wife like, I'm going to be that motherfucker within ICT. And part of my self-speech and manifestation, Michael, was talking to myself like, I'm, I'm going to trade. With all this, these hopes and aspirations, I'm going to trade like Michael. And for me, it was always this one day. And I would trade London and I'd go to work. And my uncle lived with me bro. My, my uncle who ended up dying of cancer, it's been a year, but what drove me to social media and quitting my job, I was managing a $50 million portfolio and meeting with the owner, the architectural group, the engineering group, the interior design group. And I was single-handedly managing the schedule and the budget of a $50 million development portfolio. And I would bring people together. Like during COVID we'd have teams calls 
and I'd have 15, 20, 30 people on a call and my team, the people that worked under me on, in my project management team, we'd all be fervently taking notes and then we'd have to apply the meeting minutes and then obviously the schedule and the budget, et cetera. But this community was built on me running teams. I talk, The way I talk on a phone here is the same way I would be talking to uh, as an owner rep to the owner, to the architects, to the city officials, whether we were getting permits and having this collective mastermind of folks is what a progress meeting is within that environment. And Twitter for me was Microsoft Teams. And I started coming to Twitter and leading these calls a hundred percent exactly the way I would lead these calls in a nine to five job, managing a development budget of tens of millions of dollars. So that's the long story. That's kind of the detailed version of, of I think, answering your question of at least where and how we've got to where we are within the community. It, it being formed and, and what, what held me together was blind luck with wins where most folks lose. I won, but then I took devastating losses that affected my relationship with the, my own family. I mean, no, my right ex-wife. That, that right there, that's what, I, that's what I want to tap into. That right there, that moment, you lost your first wife. Am I, am I understanding correctly that you're a new father at that time too? Yeah, I was a new father at that time. Yes, sir. Okay. So now you have all the trials and tribulations that go along with all that, which is normal. When you were being met with you know, the, the short-term adversities of not finding consistency, and like you were saying, they were unsustainable wins. Once you would get them, you couldn't replicate them. What – did you specifically, you the person, the trader, the, the person that had to deal with all of that weight on you as the new father, as the single dad, and you're trying to carve out a future for your kid and, 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 and better yourself too while still maintaining gainful employment, what were you going to as a source of encouragement to continuously keep doing it? I mean it's one thing to say, you know, it's unsustainable and it was lucky, but you were still dealing with the adversities. So what was it that you did to stay motivated? Because most people would have said, fuck this, I'm out of here. Like, I, I can't deal with it. I got, I got a kid to take care of. I got to keep working. And this is just going to have to be a pipe dream. I'll put it, put it aside until another time. Like, what what motivated you? Because I, I have students that say, you know, I, I like listening to Tony Robbins. I like listening to, you know, Grant Cardone. And I like listening to, you know, whatever, you know. Was there another? Yeah, third there was, party brother. Thing? It, was it, it? This, this is emotional for me to even say this. It was you, Michael. It was you. You gave me more hope. You empowered me. And the more I found you, and the more I listened to you, the more I knew that I could find consistency. And that it wasn't blind luck and that it was a skill set. And I had to work a full-time job. I had to be a dad to a little one. And I had to come home and I had to put away the gambler. And I had to dial in to you. Which is where and how I started literally memorizing your work. And getting access to whatever I could get access to. I was not, I am not a private mentorship student. I, I said this in our conversation before. I seeked out and I found bootleg ICT content. And I poured myself into it. It was the only beacon of light at that time that I had. It was the only hope I had. It was you, Michael. You gave me, you were the full moon in the darkness that was 
a very destructive, self-destructive path of thinking I could do things that I couldn't, not knowing what I didn't know. Me hanging up the gambler's shoes to really focus on the skill set to try to become a legitimate trader. You were the first and really the only voice that brought clarity to me in a time when I had a baby and I was juggling a lot and life was extremely difficult. I found peace in listening, staying up late at night and, and following your reviews and your concepts and things that you were sharing and then being able to apply it in demo on the charts and saying, I'm not going to wreck myself. I'm going to focus on the skill set. A lot of what I preach and advocate to other traders, 100% is because I've been down that dark road. Well, I mean, yeah, it is. And wrecking yourself is in destroying like the gambler in me, the addictive personality in me let it ride and I lost and I lost relationships and that really impacted me and one of the things that I've tried to instill within this community is my own struggles and challenges and, and why folks I think come up to talk I mean my life Michael my wife left me for a dude 40 minutes minutes away telling me she was going to yoga. She's fucking some dude 40 minutes away. I'm going on ski trips with my daughter. No, go, go. Go, go, go enjoy Mount Hood with Sienna. She's fucking and sucking some dude because he's giving her time and attention that I'm not. Because my attention, my mistress was the market. And not only that, I was working a real job and I was taking the savings, our savings, and I was putting them back in the market. Betraying her trust. Cause Would you say at, at that time, was there ever a time when she was behind you in that endeavor and maybe fell on her way? I mean, when, 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 I, when I had some payouts, brother, she was the first one to... To, to fucking suck me that one kind of way and treat me like that one kind of way with the winds. Yeah. When, when the winds were there, uh, you know, when I bought her the brand new Tesla, when, when I paid for the house, yeah, she was that, she was that one and it was awesome, but she was there for the, the good moments and she resented me for the bad. Your second wife, was there ever a support structure from her in your pursuit of trading or was it a void? Only when I won, bro. She couldn't really shoulder or accept the fact that I was dealing or that I would encounter losses. And hmm. no. So, I mean, honestly, I would say, Michael, it, she was a poison pill to my trading and she brought a level of expectation that I couldn't. I couldn't shoulder, so I wasn't coming to the charts just for me. And it's hard enough, me versus me, right? And now it's me versus me versus her, which is I why I think ultimately the relationship fell apart. When you had your losses and you were a new dad and now you are a single parent, divorced, when you had those losing trades – do you believe that they were magnified in the weight when you would be looking at your child and thinking, you know, if I didn't have this child, this would suck still, but this is so much now more worse because I feel like I'm feeling not only myself, but that child too. Did you, did you have those moments? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I stopped trading and I was working full time and I was studying trading. And I was trying to pick up what you were putting down within your life's work and within the, the different series that I would find. And I would focus on demo because the shrapnel 
from a bomb blowing up, I couldn't handle it emotionally as a father. I, I couldn't. I could not. And for a long time, I just straight stopped trading. I mean, I stopped trading options. That's for sure. I stopped trading zero TE options even after having made a lot. I, I just kept having these insufferable losses that I couldn't handle emotionally. And I felt that I was failing my daughter. Not to mention the, the women that were, you know, stroking my ego or, or stroking my you know, me. Hmm. So I yeah, I, I went back to demo. I went back to demo and tried to focus on the skill set. And, and that was for, for a very long time, even emotionally dealing with my ex wife, even this year, I spent a lot of time in demo because I didn't feel like I was emotionally capable. I was still focused on the skill set, trying to practice what I preach practice what you preach what were the things that were the most helpful to you like when when you say that they were inspirational to you like what specific things was it um a, a specific concept or is it a mindset thing um, i don't recall doing too much of the mindset i was really primarily focused on teaching conceptual things early on so i, I don't know what what you were tapping into in terms of finding that i mean it was your accuracy it was your execution it was someone to look up to i mean as a trader and i i know you don't love i mean it's from my generation you're you're michael huddleston you were michael jordan and when you think of a young boy aspiring to be a professional athlete and looking up to someone Again, I was getting bootleg content and random weekly reviews, and you were like, hmm, you were able to succeed with my concepts, and you weren't involved with the cohesive structure that I formulated for the people that were part of my mentorship. I, I just pieced and stitched together the principles that you provided, and more importantly, you gave me someone to look up to, and, and that hope – and that aspiration is what kept me coming to the charts. And then eventually finding solace in demo and finding solace in even though I'm going to go work, this can't hurt me. Mm. And for a long time, trading was just hurting me, even though I, I was. And I, I have, I've made far, far more money than I lost in dumb luck. But I've still lost houses in a day, in a week, a lot. So the adding the adding up to zeros, it wasn't just I mean, folks have a simulated account and a demo account, and I just lost a lot, man. I lost a lot and 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 it, it wiped out a lot of my gains. I mean, my brother drives a McLaren and he's a multimillionaire and I'm 46. I spend a lot of my time on social media and I I'm not broke, but I I'm not where I want to be. I'm not where I know I'm capable of being. If you I, could I go back I in time. Clarity. Go ahead. You had the ability to go back in time, knowing what you know about yourself right now what you know about the experiences you've been through. What would be the top thing that you could go back? You can only pick one thing to change it. You can remove it, change a different direction, change one aspect of something you did in the past while involved in trading. What would that one thing be? Tracking my performance. Tracking my performance as if I were a professional even back then. Journaling, back testing, whatever you want to call it, a performance analysis. Instead of blocking out, blacking out the devastating trades or decisions that I would make, journaling. Journaling and having a performance record. If I could change anything, it would be that. So Without a doubt. Think, what was the catalyst that makes you choose that? And like, what made you start thinking? I need to start doing this.
my results. But the more I started tracking and recording, then the more I started seeing not just patterns, but clear data and making decisions more based off of data and not patterns was the only type of consistency I could start to build from or create a foundation off of. I, it, I couldn't trade patterns because I'd lose. It was too discretionary. But tracking my performance and logging my results, good or bad, I mean, my sub answer to that would be my appetite for risk. So tracking my performance and having a little more sustainable appetite towards risk management because I, I didn't, I, I YOLO'd a lot and I can put my head down in shame and say that, but would you I, say I, that was the, the biggest impact why you weren't finding success or consistency early on was, is, was the fact that you, well, let's, let's narrow it down for the listeners. Cause many times when I've talked to students, they use the terms interchangeably when they mean one thing more than the other. Would you say that you were impulsively trading or that you were over leveraging in your trades? Uh, I would say both, brother. I would say I was impulsively trading, especially without tracking a performance, especially without having or utilizing data mm-hmm. or data log. Um, that was, I was impulsive and over leveraging and I was doing it more based on patterns. As soon as I started really tracking a a performance and started utilizing data, which again, I I give you all the flowers and I have to give M seven flowers as well because tracking and utilizing data and statistics and having a performance log is really where I started turning the corner in regards to my own consistency, profitability, consistency, consistency. I think too many people, including myself, have pulled money out of the market, but can you do it consistently? And that's what I, even at 46 as a trader, bro, I, I've been, I have struggled with consistency. And this year, I've really found my edge and my consistency. And that's come through utilizing everything that you've taught and blended it with what I've learned through M7. And I mean that with all the love. And I think you really embrace a trader seeing what they see and trading what they trade. And me being able to analyze because I, I have the this, this engineer's mindset because, I mean, because numbers are so important, being able to not just look at a chart, but being able to look at statistics and data And then even apply my performance within the data. I can look at a high time frame the same way you teach. I can look at 20 years worth of data. I can look at 10 years worth of data. I can look at the last 20 Mondays this year. I can look at the last 10 years of October. And what happens in October the last 10 years, the last 20 years, the last five years, the last two years. And just looking at these tables and graphs and and not just candles has given me a consistent edge that I struggled with. If you could go back and talk to your younger self, what encouragement would you give yourself and what things would you tell yourself to avoid? These are going to be the biggest problems. That's going to be the catalyst for you doing much more work, longer than it's necessary to get it. 
Never give up. Never give up. Don't don't let blowing an account blow your mental capacity to do this. The mental equity within a chart is so important with us being traders. If I could go back and and tell myself anything, I had so many limiting beliefs, self-destructive thoughts because of a decision I made on the charts. And that kept me in a cycle, a perpetual cycle of disbelief, of insecurity. And if I could go back and tell myself anything, Michael, would be never give up. And it's not a financial account you're blowing. You're blowing your mental account, your mental capacity to believe in yourself. And only through consistency, through consistency, doesn't even have to say the word profitability. Only through consistency is where the mental capital came. The limiting beliefs dissipated or the I can do this was louder than the I can't. I'll never. It's I can't. I will. Look. He can do it. Why can't I? What am I doing? For me, it wasn't any one individual concept of yours, Michael. It was being Michael Jordan. And then it was which way am I going to utilize this skill set for myself? And then coming across very detailed PAM models. Again, bootleg. But a a, a London-based protraction model. Hey, I trade London. Hey, wait, there's a central bank dealer's range. Oh, wait, that's between 2 and 8 o'clock. And then 8 o'clock to 12 o'clock is the flout. Is Asia and together combined, they're the flout. The flout's a half standard. I can measure that. It's 23 pips. It's 28 pips, 28 ticks. I can quantify the size. I can create specific data-based rules that exist. So every single time that I blew an account, I fed my demon. And only after trialing so much in demo and finding consistency without actually hurting myself that I started to feed belief. And only after having a performance record and tracking my performance, my analytics, studying data, did I... unlock what I believe is 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 my own consistency Con- same framework every day three o'clock to four o'clock your silver bullet times are the times that the DR forms so for me it's the same framework every day every day I'm looking at same same framework. And then I'm basing my rule set around the model that I believe price is providing. And, that, and, and because you've taught so many, because I've been exposed to so much from you, but also M7, I have a lot of models that I can engage in with price. And it's as you've, as we've all stated, it's if, if, then, if, when, and specific conditions need to be met. And then I, I can look at, like I said, what's the performance of, Tuesdays over the last 10 years in October I I can review that and I can see if London 
goes long, that there could be a 56 to 70% chance that New York's going to go long too. And constructing those data models, I've been able to trade with more probability. And within the probability and the data has also come more consistency. So I hope I answered your question. I feel long-winded. No, 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 you're fine. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to be patient so that way because it, these aren't easy questions to answer. I mean, because it's, it's, you have to reflect on a long period of time. Um, it's one of those kind of questions where you want to be as honest and direct so that way you can really communicate the gravity of what I'm asking. And for folks that have just started learning how to trade, they don't understand it. And for the folks that have been at it for a while, uh, these types of questions are paramount because it's important to see what other people have gone through. And you've mentioned, you know, what your weaknesses were early on. What would you say, you know, some of your strengths are now having gone through everything in terms of adversity and trying to discover who you are and how to work through your character flaws like every trader does. What would you say your strengths are today? I'd say my number one strength is, and it has to do with what my job was as a nine to five. And I say this to a lot of folks is we are professional decision makers. And I feel like I have wisdom and experience and reflection that today I make good decisions on and off the charts. What would you say that that is the contributing factors that you employ now that makes you a good decision maker, whereas in the beginning you can – readily admit probably you weren't the best at decision making then what what things are you putting in practice now as a more refined trader with more experience more in the trenches scar tissue the the the, the moxie now what is it that you're employing now that makes you better in that area the realization that the decisions that i make i'm making in the mirror and that i can't hide from them wonderful i I always thought that the rules applied to everyone else but me and that I could get away with not having to follow the rules. But when I'm defining what those rules are and I have to look in the man in the mirror is defining those decisions that I'm making You can't hide from that. And it took me a long time to not be able to hide from the decisions I was making because a lot of the decisions I was making were self-destructive. And the biggest change that I've made is holding myself accountable and holding myself accountable on front street. This group has been very therapeutic for me over the last year, being in a lot of emotional drawdown. This talking amongst traders has been very therapeutic for them and me. And not hiding from not being capable of hiding from the decisions I make on and off the chart. Off the chart matters so much more. And I don't think I realized that. I thought I thought I could just be reckless. But somehow I would still operate within this level of precision. And I would make reckless decisions. I would do reckless things. I mean, even if it's just drinking and partying and, you know, doing what a lot of kids do, you know, up all night, getting faded, fucking. 
and then turning around and thinking you're going to engage in the charts the next day with some kind of precision. Like you're actually going to work to make a financial decision. Do you think that in the early stages of your trading, did you ever use trading as an escape from whatever you were feeling at the time? Like you just feel like you wanted to win something to feel like you were a winner for the sake of winning that trade? Oh, how many times have I gone to the market for validation when everything else was falling apart? Risking it all to try and feel validated with a win, holding my breath, not having rules or framework, making a discretionary decision, not journaling, not backtesting, yet somehow thinking that trade was going to answer my problem my bigger problem. I did it a lot, Michael. I did it a lot. Would you say that today, with more maturity and a more objective approach to doing what it is that we do as professional decision makers, would you say that today's mindset that you employ is more aligned with following a process, a model, pursuing the the evidence that the data would suggest is statistically probable for you to be doing what you're doing versus having any emotional or psychological reward for the basis outside of doing what is in the model. Uh, I mean, a hundred percent. I mean, for, for the audience folks listening, like Andrew Tate, I think is, he can be a motivational voice. He might be divisive. But I was in some pretty deep, dark drawdown mentally and emotionally. And I had some one-on-ones with M7 who pretty much said, listen, pussy, motherfucker, get up. Quit making excuses. The only way you're going to win is by start acting like a fucking winner. Right? And, and, And if you think of like... If you were to Google Andrew Tate motivation, like that's what M7 was for me in some of my deepest, darkest times. And he was in my ear and literally talking to me for hours. And that really helped me. That lifted me up. That lifted me up in a time that, you know, I, I, I was struggling, man. I felt like I, I felt worthless. I mean, a woman that I spent eight years with, I mean, that my wife leaving me for another dude, that really fucked with me, Michael. And it really fucked with my trading. It really, even though I had had all of these clarity and understanding of what these concepts were and even how to measure them and, and I was doing better, it just fucked with me. And... He kind of found me at a time he found me and, and he, he, he poured into me and he invested a lot of time and energy into me to help me see what my potential was. And he was like an Andrew Tate voice of like, you're a winner. You can win. You know how to win. You're not a pussy. You're not weak. Get the fuck up and be who you are. Realize your own potential. There's a zillion fucking women out there. And guess what? All of them want to be with a a high value guy that really men, only 1% of them are actually going to be. You're that motherfucker. And in... I mean, I think we all need that friend. We all need that mentor. We all need that shoulder. And, and he really was that for me, man. He really was not only that, like just all the statistics and data and the way he was able for me to supercharge your concepts really made me more inclusive. Like I'd see 
the Twitter beef and, and this tribal, like, oh, no, fuck you. No, fuck you. Oh, no, my way's better. No, my way's better. It's like, hold on. Hold on. We're all adults here. We're all adults. And if I were to tell you that I've found a way successfully to blend A and B to create my own version of C, and that works, and it doesn't contradict, and they they play nice together. Like, do you all really need to argue and fight about all of this? And instead of arguing and fighting, it's again inclusive. And, and I've, I've embraced blending your concepts with his concepts and, and, and finding my own way to trade. And, and it has developed consistency and models that are utilizing your models and his models as confluences, ways of stacking up. It's not just one thing, right? It's all these ingredients going into a cake. And yeah, man, and what comes out is consistency. And after you get consistency, then comes profitability. And then we all get to deal with, within profitability, dealing with, then it's not a question of fear, insecurity but then it's the the other side of the spectrum it's overconfidence it's greed in the yin and the yang of trading like first you don't know what the fuck you're doing and then once you know what you're doing you still don't know what the fuck you're doing because you just get to be on the other end so that yin and yang of not knowing what you don't know, but then knowing what you know, but then you don't know what you don't know. And that swing, I think focusing on a framework, focusing on a model, focusing on consistency, that's that's what we preach every day. That's what I try and utilize this platform for every day is to talk to the 20 year old myself who hasn't gone through the difficult, arduous, lonely, dark journey that is binding consistency. I mean, fuck profit, because you ain't going to, if you're profit, you're going to, if you're profitable, you're a fraud. Because you can't do it again. And that's, that's what I struggled with a lot. Kind of on my journey, Michael. What's your goals for the next five years? My goals for the next five years are to take to take Trader Roundup, my five hundred one c three nonprofit, and impact real lives, real lives. Shed light in dark places. Follow in the footsteps of the great men that lead, that have led before me, my mentors. I want to be, I want to utilize my increase to be impactful, help others less fortunate. Folks that haven't been blessed, folks that are still on their journey. So, so, so my goal, it's obtuse. It's to be more impactful. Honing it in, I want to be the best father I can be, the best son I can be. I want to be the best lover I can be. I want to be the best trader I can be. I want to be the best version of myself and turning 46 in two weeks. I know what that looks like mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. I'm more in touch with my spiritual purpose in having an impact after watching not one, but two men, mentors, my father and my uncle die. 
and they died with a whimper. No one went to their funeral. Not because they weren't great men, but they didn't have an impact on a lot of other people. They just had that impact on me, which was enough because I didn't have one father figure. I had two. My mom's brother and my dad. Lost my dad in 2014. Lost my uncle last year. And losing my uncle, I told myself, and that's when I turned to social media, that I wanted to have an impact on this world. I wanted to leave a legacy. I wanted people to know my name. So my goal in the next five years, Michael, is uh, motherfuckers are going to know my name. As not just a community builder, but as a great fucking trader. That's, that's my goal. And I want to take my trades and my gains and me being impactful and I, I want to help the skinny kids that don't have anything. Whose mother and father left them who are being brought up by their grandma who can't pay the rent who haven't eaten. And that's not a five-year goal. I, I, that's a today goal. That's what I focus on. I don't need to talk about what I do to other people, but that's what I do. I don't do it for social media. I don't do it for this platform. But I'm here to help and impact the lives of the millions of other people who are misfortunate, unfortunate in that struggle. And that's it. I have one last question and you can ask me some stuff. What what words of encouragement would you give someone that has started learning how to trade? It doesn't have to be my stuff. What words of encouragement would you tell someone that has tried to sit down and you look at these charts and it looks like hieroglyphics in a foreign language they've never learned before and it feels so insurmountable that they can't even imagine being able to tell what this thing is going to tell you to do to buy or sell to make money you know, how do you make money you know, what what should I do like what words of encouragement for those individuals that are right there at that crossroad contemplating this is probably going to be too hard for them maybe they shouldn't try to do it what would you tell them I would tell them to stop focusing on the Lambos and the account flippers with the foreign brokerage accounts that are utilizing a marketing platform to try and sell them a get-rich-quick scheme. I would tell people to listen to and find a voice that you can trust that has your interest in teaching you a model and a framework. And the most important thing, track, manage, log your performance. Every trade is a lesson. Because you're going to lose a lot. You're going to acquire a lot of lessons. But if you don't know what time and price, where they were, what they were doing, you don't have a model if you don't have data. You don't have a framework. You don't have consistency. If you're trying to follow some motherfucker who's who's driving around in a Lambo telling you how to trade. So find credible resources to learn from. Focus on tracking and managing your lessons. And in the world that we live in, data 
is king. You ain't shit if you ain't got reps. It doesn't matter how I trade. It matters how you trade. That would be it, bro. That's what I that's the advice I would give. I mean good. So I get to ask you a couple questions. If we could encapsulate it in thirty minutes. Yes. Well, I mean, I'd love to just kind of I think a lot of people want to know like the burning question on social media is like what's Michael Huddleston going to do after <laughs> November 11th? Is I mean, that's the first question I think of the, at the top of my head. I mean, is that okay? I mean, is... <laughs> Yeah. Um, I want to do a lot of fishing. I want to do a lot of personal things with my wife, some of the things that she wants to spend time with doing as a couple, um, travel. She wants to go to certain destinations, and I'm going to make myself available to do that so we could go and have those moments together. Uh, she wants a scrapbook, like she wants to see us bouncing around a little bit, globe travel a little bit, and that's a little hard for me because I don't want to fly, so everything's going to have to be either cruise or mainland. So she's been working on me in regards to certain destinations. She like she wants to go to Italy and she wants to see uh, France and. I like Ireland. I, I, there was a time when I was contemplating moving to Ireland. There was also a time when I was contemplating moving to the UK. Uh, she wasn't. She wasn't on board with that. But um, just basically, just being you know a person away from charts. I'm going to trade, but I, I'm not trying to be inner circle trader anymore. So that's. I just want to be her husband and the dad to my kids and encourage them and try to help them become better at. What you know, two of them are interested in, and I want to try to supercharge that. So, and I don't want to be in the spotlight online. Okay. When you, what degree? Again, I'm trying to think of not just looking at questions, but I'm trying to think of what the listener would want to know if they had the opportunity to stand up here and ask you a question. The burning question I think of, what are your books going to be about? Is it going to be technical science? Is it going to be a story? Is it going to be a written mentorship? Is there a, a flavor? I'm sure you've already got these books written. So I'm curious as to what you'd be willing to reveal to us because I feel like I'm asking you like the the hard questions that the community wants to know right and the, I, again I don't know the three technical books are going to be basically the only way I can condense the only way I could sit down and condense now that I've released the language um, in my mentorship, the, the paid mentorship, the charter level stuff, uh, there's people out there trying to sell the price action models. Okay, and I, I've, I'm on record saying this, and I told them when I released them that these are very demanding in terms of parameters. Things have to be this way, or you can't trade them. Knowing that the majority of the people that were in my mentorship and still are waiting for me to produce new videos, which notice there ain't no videos. I told you all I'm not going to make them videos anymore because um, they want to sell it. I've, I've made millionaires in different countries because they sold this stuff. And I get it. You know, it was hot. It was the drug of choice for, you know, for a little while. And 
the language that I've released and made public now. If I, well, perfect example, I was doing a live stream the other day and I was unaware. I was very confident, overconfident <laughs> that I, the audio was working. I didn't even bother asking on Twitter like I have been to see if everybody could confirm they could hear me. But it was very encouraging to see people tweeting to me saying, even though I don't hear you audibly, I hear you audibly. I know what you're talking about because you know what I'm doing. If I'm drawing a line above two equal highs or relatively equal highs, you know what's up out there, buy side and sell side. And I'm drawing out uh, rectangles. So you know that this is where my focus is. And I told my son, I said, you know, that to me is awesome. And for someone that's not a trader or, or aware of what it is I'm trying to draw a spotlight to, it won't mean anything to them. But because you have spent time with me, that means you understand my language. So if you've never read the book Street Smarts, okay, um, I thought that that book was done in a way where it scratched an itch that I didn't know I had because I thought that trading had to be absolutely next to impossible and it was a puzzle that you know, only a few could figure out and I wasn't going to put it down until I figured it out. I, I, I believe God gave me obsessive compulsive for that very reason. Every mental disorder I have is a superpower. In the beginning as a child, I thought it was a weakness. So it's in the vein and style, writing style, of street smarts that they have very specific, they call it patterns. I have specific models. So I'm going to be releasing very specific models and amplifications of the ones that I've already taught because they get better than what I've already shared. Those are the three things. And then I'm going to draw on the core content lessons so that way you can see that this is what's available to you. You don't have to do it this way, but this is just one more way to skin the cat. The fourth one is the one that everybody seems to be asking about in emails and in reaching out to me on uh, letters like they'll mail me letters and say look can you can you just talk about what that book's going to be about can you do this and can you do that so I, i'll let the i'll let the cat out of the bag because you know i don't think this is going to be the the book that people really care too much about and i don't care if you buy any of them really i just want to put it in written format so that way it has you know association to me as the author <sighs> am i coming up Okay, in my coming up as a as a trader, I, I met a lot of people, and certain individuals were interested in me because I was able to do things publicly, like you all see me doing right now. I was doing that with the commodity market. Now, I wasn't always accurate. My hit rate wasn't as what you all see today, where I talk about something publicly and it happens. That's a track record. I'm not deleting anything. I'm not giving two sides of a coin and saying, let's flip it, and whatever side comes up, I'm going to be calling myself the winner. It's very specific things I'm teaching and touching on when I'm referring to price. And if you do that type of stuff in, in a world where it's rare to see it, in a new medium, which was the Internet, because on America Online, you know, that was the thing back then. Everybody was enamored by it, willing to pay too much money for just an hour worth of access to it and wait forever for things to load up. Folks reached out to me, and I, 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 there's people out there literally talking a bunch of bullshit for the sake of clout, but the Commodity Futures Trading Commission literally subpoenaed me, okay? And I had a desktop computer and I facetiously in like a dick move, I made a, a comment in the corpse. I told corpse before we started the interview, I said, look, you know, there's some things I'm going to talk about other things. I'm certainly not going to talk about um, certain things. I do talk about harm in every sense of the word. So there's going to be certain points where you'll ask me and then I'll say, I'm not going to talk about that. And I ask you to be respectful of that and make sure it's not in the final cut. 
but there's other things I divulged and talked about in terms of, you know, how I got this information and meeting people and seeing things that would, by anyone else's description, would be considered out of this world. Some of those experiences won't be believable. They're just simply not going to be believable to people. And I've shared some of my testimonies that are outside of trading, and they sound like made-up stories. And I don't care what people's opinions are. I, don't, I really don't care because it, it, they happened. I experienced it. I'm bringing the receipts to show you that these things cause this change in me that I can't say this is the reason why it really was this. It really was this teacher, this book. It was really this thing, this strategy that I renamed like everybody else is saying. I have had literally Old Testament experiences that I don't know how else to say except for this is what happened. I, I you know... When I tell people in honesty that I hear, I hear a voice, I hear it. It tells me exactly what it wants me to do, what to say, and when I listen to it, I'm right. When I was learning how to do this, I would literally be crying and praying, asking, please, I'm ready, I'm ready to end myself because I wouldn't let go of it. Look here. I would look. And then the audible part sometimes wouldn't be audible. It would be like internal. But it's not my conscience talking. And then I grew the courage to just run with it and just talk to it like I'm talking to you. And in the beginning, I thought I was losing my mind. I thought I was going mad. And as I was opening myself up more to it and having – that's why – that's what fed me doing this all night long and going to work with three hours sleep, sometimes less than that, and then we're running out of energy. There's some of you that are probably listening to this. Maybe you're a Muslim, and you think Allah's God. I don't think that. Some of you think that Buddha's God. I don't think that. Some of you think that Jesus is the son of God and he's part of a Godhead. I don't believe that. I believe there's one God. I don't know why he spoke to me. I don't know. I don't deserve it. I do not deserve that. But there will be no one that's going to ever rise up and speak against him or my experiences and belittle any of it. And I sat out here on Twitter for over two years, challenging, begging and pleading this little man to let me show you. And he was too fearful. I came right back to Twitter to show you exactly what's real. I've allowed you all into my world. I've allowed you into my life. And I've told you things that none of you or in a position to expect or demand. And when I'm honest with you, and I'm telling you what took place and how it happened, and then you want to make a joke about it, does that inspire me to tell you more? Do my children telling me that people are trying to reach out to them through their cell phones? Are you ICT's dad? Can you ask your dad to do this and can you ask your dad to do that? And they run up on them in public. Does that make me feel like I made a good decision by ever opening my mouth about any of this? I believe the scripture that refers to be careful how you entertain strangers because many times – Entertaining angels unaware. I've had conversations with people that wouldn't make any sense to you. They 
They knew me. I don't know them. And truth be told, because I know this would never fit with what most of you would accept as reality, real, whatnot. And even this this whole discussion here, sound bites are going to be taken from it. They're going to turn it into clout chasing videos because they lose their accounts live on their live streams. They can't join the Robin's Cup. They can't do it. And I have never, ever, ever, ever joined a Robin's Cup with my children's name. They never done it. And I didn't lose it three times, two times, four times, five times. I sank that account because it was synced to a MyFX book. And I was told by good, by good source that they had every intention of copying every trade. And I sank it. And I'm Posted right on that MyFX book website. You're my bitches. And people have taken that and twisted it and said I was talking to my students. No, I said it about MyFX book. I don't mind doing something to mar my image because all I got to do is come out here for a week and prove to you I know exactly what I'm talking about and what these markets are going to do. So the fourth book is an answer for people that just don't want to take the truth. You need a side story. You need something else to entertain you. How does this guy know how to do this? So I believe the two people I met, you need a side story. So I'll give you that. Might be entertaining for some of you, Tom Clancy-esque, but the rest is rooted in stuff you find in the Old Testament. When I said I stood out in front of my house and I basically said, God, this is the moment. I need to know. I need to know this right now. And I didn't say it, but I said it in my heart. Audibly, I didn't say it, but in my heart, I said, if this does not happen, I'm putting all of this down. And I'm going to just assume that it's all been emotions worked up in a frenzy. But I need this right now. I need to know that you hear me. I need to know that if you answer this, I will never doubt whatever outcome comes from whatever prayer I ask for. And I'm not asking for a yes every time because it will be no from you if it doesn't happen, and I'm okay with it. I'll know that you heard me, and that's all I need to know. But I need to know that you hear me. And I asked for it. Something, something so trivial, like a child. I came to him like a child. I said, I want to see a shooting star right where I'm looking. I'm not even going to blink because I already know it's coming. I don't even know why I said that. It just felt like I had to say it. And it looked like two pinpoint lights bouncing on one another, going from right to left. And I couldn't take my eye off of it. And I got butterflies telling you this all over again. My voice is shaking because I'm, I'm right in that same moment again. And where it stopped... A small, ever so tiny, thin shooting star from left to right shot right across. And before I could open my mouth and say, that's it, I know exactly, thank you so much. It's like a softball or a grapefruit. Now, this is the only way I can describe it. If you take your right hand, extend it in front of your face, as far as your arm can reach. Imagine a grapefruit or a softball, just a little bit larger than a, a, a regular baseball, Major League Baseball size diameter this ball of fire literally from left to right exactly where i was looking exactly where the first two pinpoint lights ended and the first shooting star started it it began right there and i saw it so slowly move across the sky right in front of where i was standing and looking up at it lit the whole area up like it was daytime i heard it crackling And I couldn't believe what I just saw and heard. I'm looking around like, did anybody else please see that with me? And I was the only one standing there. And I started jumping up and down, crying and laughing at the same time. Because what do you do with that? What do you do with that? Like, what, what, what do you do at that moment? It shakes your whole core. Like, I'm, I got butterflies talking about all over again.
I knew that he was telling me unequivocally, never doubt me, I hear you. Because he trusted when I told him, if it's no, it's no, and I'm okay with it. And there's been many things I've asked for, it's no. But sometimes it's yes, and it's confirmed with a yes, when it matters most. My son Cameron, he had, uh, he was on a travel team for soccer. And my daughter's birthday, we were going to go to a Kobe Steakhouse and celebrate it there. And he had a game scheduled that same day. And he didn't want to go there because he didn't want to eat, you know, the Japanese food. So she's like, well, I can take him, drop him off at the game and meet you there. And I was like, immediately she said that, I get this unction in my spirit, tell her no. I said, no, you can't do that. She's like, it's not a big deal. I promise I can be there. You won't be waiting long. I said, no, no. It's not safe. Don't do it. Just don't do it. No, no, no. I'm going to go. I'm going to take him. I told her again. She's going down the steps. Please don't go. Something bad's going to happen. Please just don't go. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be all right. It's going to be fine, Michael. Just go. I'll meet you guys there. Well, 20 minutes later, she's calling me. My youngest son was in the back seat riding with her. He's screaming, I want my dad. I want my dad. She hit black ice, spun around, and a truck plowed into her. Totaled the car. Cameron's shoulders messed up. He bangs his head against the window. And my youngest son's tore up because the seatbelt damaged his front of his uh, body and he hit his head against the seat and he's panicking and she's panicking. She don't know where she's at. She don't know if she can move the car out of the middle of the road and then the phone dies. That same voice told me to close the door when I was a teenager, right before my friend who's no longer with us anymore, pulled his father's trigger and almost blew my face off with his gun. And every paint chip that hit me in the face I thought was buckshot. And all the buckshot was on the side of the door I was standing on. And not one of it hit me. That same voice. To someone that's an atheist, to someone that has another religion, this sounds schizophrenic. This sounds like you're hearing voices. You're mad. And if anybody else was telling me this and I didn't have faith in God, I would think the same thing. I understand, but I can't make you believe it, and I don't care if you do. Why do you think I learned this? Where do you think it came from? Because I've told everyone, five million U.S. dollars, find it anywhere. Talking about it in a comment section or tweeting about it, it's just rebooted, doesn't hold water. And I only want credit so that way in these books and like in these discussions here, I don't want praise. I want the opportunity to direct it to him. Because it's his. And I don't deserve being the person I know I was and who I still am. Somebody else should have had this. But I feel guilty. I feel guilty leaving because I feel like I'm not doing what I was supposed to do. But I love my wife. I'm not going to be able to answer everything for some of you. You don't have to believe anything I say. I want you to not believe it. I want you to test it. If it's real, you'll know.
That fourth book is fiction for a reason. I'm giving you something other than what I've already told you because some people want that more than simply what it is. You can't imagine, you can't imagine something outside of our time domain, outside of our physical property of gravity in our simulation that we live in that created everything and us. He's incapable of telling me something like this. He's incapable of teaching you something. You're trying to tell me that there isn't a creator that can't find a way to communicate to somebody and give them an understanding that it would have never had anywhere else. Where did Solomon get his wisdom from? He asked for it. He asked for it. How did he ask for it? Give me wisdom so I can lead my people. What? Give me wisdom so I can help others. And that's how I asked it. I wanted it for me in the beginning, and I couldn't do it. I couldn't tell you what any of these candlesticks were going to do. Everything was failure. My motivation was, I can't be selfish. I felt convicted. I felt like the Holy Spirit was dealing with me because I was a very selfish person. Because I needed to be validated. I needed to feel significant because my own family didn't see it in me. They didn't want nothing to do with me. I was supposed to be aborted. And my murderous father had to threaten my own mother with her own life for me to be born. He's still out there in Jessup, Maryland. He's up there. 155634 is his inmate number. Michael Joe Howington, write to him. It'll probably take a long time for him to write back because his eyes are really bad, but he's got a friend that will write back to you probably. I know all this stuff sounds like, what the heck? This sounds like a, a movie. And honestly, that's another reason why I want to drop down and I don't want any more attention. I don't want any more attention. That book literally is me giving the people that just don't want to hear the truth something to hang their hat on. I... I codified Enigma. It's mine. It's mine. That is not the enig that is not the algorithm that delivers price. This is what handshakes with it. Two different things. Totally two different things. Quick follow-up question. How do you manage a family and life in the charts? I know it's a loaded topic and I know you're exiting from where you're at and what you've been doing, but there's a lot of folks that still will we'll seek to manage this balance. How do you recommend or subscribe someone manage trading um, in a well, family? Listening to me, understand that I was a failure in that regard because of time management skill. Had, I had to learn that late. And as a father, as a, a business owner, a trader, and a husband, you only have 1440, and you have to make the best of it. And while some of you don't run on the little sleep that I try to run on, you have to have more sleep because you're doing other things. You worry about things I don't have to worry about. 
So all of that requires more rest. I don't think I'm equipped to tell someone that has to have a job, has a family member, maybe a spouse, or maybe a new relationship, or just fallen out of a relationship. I don't think I'm in a position where I can give any usable approach except for you just have this many minutes a day, this many hours a day, this many days a week, this many days a month, and what you got coming in is income and what you have to do to manage everything that goes on. Like we had cheerleading with my daughter. We had sports, everything with my kids, and I was rarely ever there. So I failed as the dad. I failed as the husband. I failed as the supportive daddy coming to every game. It was a few times that I made it, and I'm telling you so few, it's shameful. And I don't think that I'm in the a position of authority to be able to tell anyone how to do it because I didn't do it. And that's why I tell you, and that's why I teach this way because I'm remorseful to it. I, I wish I could have been better at it, but I chased the money. I chased the prominence. I chased the, chased the affluence and I also chased the feeling of the success of being able to do it. And when that, when that happens and you come from a, a modest upbringing, no money, I didn't come from money. I didn't come from affluence. Only, only two other people in my pedigree ever graduated high school and one other person went to college. My uncle and my aunt. And my uncle graduated college and had to go to work for a KFC with a business degree. So I, I'm not from... A very high pedigree. I was working class hero, raised by a lumber lumber hauling Navy man that worked at Essex Lumber, and he drove a forklift and made three hundred dollars a week gross. So I don't think I'm in a position to be able to give that kind of advice. Okay. I too can I resonate with that answer. How about when and how did you realize that your efforts as a trader were bringing you clarity? Can you, where, can you say it one more time? I'm sorry. Excuse me. <clears throat> where or how did you realize that your efforts were bringing you clarity? I mean, for a new trader or, or for someone who's coming up in in this game, Where, I mean, there is no silver line that someone crosses, but where, how does someone, where, where would you recommend? Okay. This is, let let me frame this in, in the way like a milestone for a trader who's up and coming, could you list three milestones that you believe are paramount to them becoming consistent and profitable in your eyes for, for the, the novice trader listening, what, what is a trackable device on their journey? In the beginning, I started with a want uh, you know, I, I wanted to be significant. I wanted to be able to afford things that none of my family members could. And I, I dated a girl that I wanted to impress. And I later married. And she left me for a 40-year-old man that used to give me candy at his family grocery store. So I can relate to your first wife story. But not to be the guy that does you. <laughs> I think it's a little bit more painful when 
she's 17 and she goes with a 40 year old man. So I had a lot of hurt and a, a necessity for me to, to rise up above whatever anyone thought of me and my family. So it starts with the belief that it's possible for you. If you don't have that, everyone around you is going to convince you that it's not for you. So that mile marker, you have to have that right from Jump Street. You can't not have that. And as long as you hold on to that, you can lose everything but that. And as long as you have that, that's enough for you to say, I'm not quitting. It's just a matter of time. You have to be responsible and own every action is no one else's fault but your own. In the beginning, I faulted everything. I faulted brokers. I faulted the people I learned from and thought I was understanding what they just wrote in one chapter. I would literally take something I read in one chapter and be so quick to go out there and put it into real practice with real money. And then, gone. Lose. The, the time I understood that my efforts were panning out and was presenting what it is I was beginning to see as the first stages of figuring out what it is I should be doing as a trader was when I stopped trying to trade everything and focus on one or two things. And I'm very appreciative of Larry Williams for this aspect because he talked about how he was trading all the commodities, the agricultural markets and the financial markets. And then finally, it wasn't until he settled in on two markets, the bond market and the S&P 500. And he didn't care what anything else did. I shunned that advice early on. I said, okay, that's his opinion because I can make more if I follow all these other markets. But that's foolishness because I didn't have enough money to meet the margin to be able to trade even one contract of five different markets, let alone all the markets I was following. And once I started seeing the progress of seeing only a few handful of setups between the bond market and the S&P 500, I knew that all I needed to be able to do is focus on a model, one approach to doing it, do it for the week, and once I hit my number, stop. And if I can be consistent doing that, I'm going to build a rapport with the market and my ability to stick to a model. I will build discipline and I'll have something to hang my fears against when I do have losing trades because I have a progress that I can go back to and say, no, it doesn't mean it's failed. It's because I have this where it worked. I have this where it worked. This is where it worked. This is worked. So it's a, a way for me to lean on my own experiences because the books at that time stopped working for me. They, they, they didn't give me inspiration anymore. I, st I stopped buying books because they no longer gave me hope. So I had to find that in my own experiences. So it was at that time when I abandoned the pursuit of buying courses, books for the sake of learning something I had to replace a failed logic on. I had sound logic. I was accumulating real experience, but I didn't need or I didn't know that I needed that in the beginning when I first started because I thought it was a, a trick to trading that I just had to mimic versus discovering who I was. And what I needed to fix about myself and patience. That was the, I started that on baby pips. That was the first thing I started talking about. You, you have to have patience. Everything that you want can happen. Given enough time, you put the effort in consistently, you will get the results. No matter what, by default, you'll get it. But too many people rush to get there. And that rushing causes you to forget why you even started trading in the first place. You, know, you all want to make more money. That's why I did it. I didn't originally start trading to be a, a rich person. I wanted to be able to stop working at 40. So my, my plan was 20 years. I was willing to wait 20 years. Some of you don't even want to listen to a two-hour lecture that's going to help you make $2,000 in, in a week. You're complaining that it's, it's too long to go through that. I was submitting to a 20-year program. You're bitching about going through a four-year degree at college. I had a 20-year program. You're complaining about having to work the rest of your life and, and never had anything inside of that. I was subscribing to the idea that I'm going to have to work until I'm 40 and I'm not going to be able to take any change in, in direction until I'm 
at that age of 40. So it was a different mindset. That, at that moment, that's how I knew every effort I was putting forward was going to yield the results I was aiming for. But I had them in very small little bite sizes in terms of reality. Okay. Love that. How are we on time, mate? I'll give you 15 more. Okay. Perusing through some questions here, seeing what the audience is asking. And um, you've got a zillion models. I mean, over 81 different ways of entering price. They're not models. They're this there are this mechanisms that I can build a model around so that all of them are, they have a, a limitless multiplier added to it, but I have 81 ways to, to get into a trade. Yeah. I know we're, we're dads and you can't say what your favorite is, but ICT's preferred method. Again, I feel like I'm asking inquiring minds want to know you've got a myriad but if you had to boil it down into one, and if not one, three, of what you've included in your body of work, what would ICT say is his preferred method? I understand the variables, and I understand the difficulty in answering this. I do. I'm prefacing Are you asking questions. only on what I've shared publicly? Is that what you're asking? Well, I mean, if you want to share what you haven't shared publicly, yes, please. <laughs> by all means. Let's speak in the realm of what's already been shared. Okay. If I had to only trade one model for the rest of my life, knowing everything that I've given out publicly, if I had to just choose one of them, it would be the second stage distribution of a market maker sell model or second stage reaccumulation of a market maker buy model. And I could make as much money as I ever want and never need to do anything else, look at anything else, and I'd be quite content with that. Okay, so an MMXM or a 2022, essentially, right? Like the, okay. I mean, yes, that, that's what you're saying. I'll, I'll probably, I'll probably, dis, that'll, that, I'll, I'll replace October's model. I'll just teach that one. I'll teach it as if this is the model. If I was never teaching anything else and this was the line in the sand said, I'm never going to teach anything new and nothing new in the books would ever be revealed or nothing like that. If it was just what I've released up until right now today, October 7th, 2023, all of you know, my market maker models. Okay. It's not like golf. It's, it's very specific elements that are part of the buy side of the curve and the sell side of the curve. And they're directly relinked to both sides. They both have a relationship with one another. It's not support and resistance. It's a logic of order flow. On, the, on a market maker sell model, I would be aiming for a pool of liquidity below the original consolidation to so their sell side down here. I'm going to wait for a reversal. And I'm going to wait for it to sell off and create another opportunity to sell off. But at least pierce 50% of from the smart money reversal down to the sell side liquidity. It has to drop at least 50%. If it drops 50% of that and then starts to rally again, I'm going to key that up with the other side of the curve where the market was rallying up before it reversed. I'm going to pair it up with something over there as a PD array that was bullish on that side, but now it's going to act as a inversion level. A lot of my charter members are going to have light bulb moments here listening to this. And that short is the second stage distribution or redistribution rather. And it's going to run quickly, the biggest powerful run right into the sell side. So what I'm waiting for is a unicorn setup where I'm waiting for the best of the best. Everything's in motion. I got everything on my side. Everything is in play for it to be there. And now I'm going to risk 5% on that trade. Oh boy, that's some sauce. <laughs> Dear sir, 
And are, so, so you're saying the October model is the, this yeah, I'll, te- I'll teach that one. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you heard that. That's so the reaccumulation and sell side drives down to 50% and then you pair it up with another PD array and, and you take it on the reversal. I think that's what I heard. Okay, I'll, I'll... Imagine, imagine a market maker sell model where you have a consolidation and relative equal lows are formed and it starts to rally up. It rallies up, it creates a little consolidation. You might classically see that as a bull flag or a small pennant. And then it rallies out of that and maybe not all of not all the time, but sometimes it'll create a second stage of reaccumulation, trading up to a premium array. A level that I think is a draw on liquidity. If I was bullish, I would reach for that. I don't necessarily have to be there for that time of the trade. I might identify something at a later time and say, oh, I, I wasn't trading. I didn't see that there. But now I see this. It's reacting off of a level that should offer sell side. So you know, we're sell side delivery. The market should drop down. So I'm anticipating price reacting and reversing at the smart money reversal. Once it starts to break down, if it goes back up a little bit, that's the smart money, I'm sorry, smart money reversal, low risk sell is the next stage, and then the drop. Then you get two points of redistribution where it sells off. The second one, which many times can look like the third, the second one after when you get the low risk sell, that low risk sell, when it drops down, its drop has to be at least 50% from the smart money reversal to where the sell side you're aiming for is. As long as it does that, then I will trust that the next rally is going to go right into a premium array on the left side of the curve before it went up to make the high and reversed. And I know that some of this is going to be very confusing for some of you that don't know what I'm talking about, but I promise you it's extremely simple. But the caveat is the first sell-off needs to go down 50% of the total range before you get to the sell side. Once that occurs, I know, because if you remember in the in the core content when I'm teaching market maker sell models and buy models, I give instances where that market maker buy model can fail to go to its target. Much like a market maker sell model can fail to go to its pool of liquidity. Why would it do that? Because it's part of a larger continuation. So when and how would I determine when it's going to fail? That first leg of redistribution on the sell side, if it doesn't pierce 50% of that range from the smart money reversal down to the uh, sell side liquidity, if it doesn't do that, then it's not going to go down there. It's going to be a continuation and reversal go the other way. So I literally just gave you something that even charter members don't know. And some of you don't know what I mean by that. That's okay. (laughs) But you'll learn it this month before I close the month out. Oh, boy. If Zussi's listening, I know he would say, sauce. (laughs) It's a universal model, too. So it works on all time frames. It's not limited to any one particular time frame. I love that. I love that. I love that we get a couple trading specific kind of gems in this conversation, meaning for a fact, folks are going to go back and listen to and. uh the, the, the trader specific questions I know folks uh, are, are going to love uh, combing through. So, I mean, we've had a vulnerable Michael. We've had an articulate Michael. We've had the trader Michael. We've had the family man Michael. We've had an excellent back and forth in emulating and mimicking what our conversation was for nearly five hours back on, I believe it was April 11th. I want to say if my notes are correct, it was around then. Um, and talking about models and trading and giving the folks what they want. Is there, I'm, you know, I'm a fib based guy and you know, I love OTE. Is there any, have you revealed 
maybe is there like a special fib setting or is there a, fe- a special way of measuring price within a range or, or again, I, this question, because I'm a fib based trader and I'm asking almost selfishly within my own trading, uh, aspirational kind of questions outside of the 70.5, we know, and I'll say the 61.8 is also a real big deal just because of the Fibonacci of life, right. Within our elbows, our hands and, uh, bending of, of, of things. Is there, a certain way in 2023 today that Michael would explain a fib setting or a way in which to key off of a fib that he hasn't already utilized within your body of work. Just, just asking, I don't know. Is there any special? None that I would make public. Okay. That's, that's a very fair statement. Very fair statement. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, so, so the short answer is yes, and that's not for us to know. Um, With all due respect, and that's 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 your prerogative, my friend. I just would be remiss if I didn't ask, being such a fib trader, fib based trader. Um. I'll toss this out there, and you'll see it mentioned in, in one of the books. This is another little extra. Um, when I was teaching fair value gaps and I was teaching standard deviations, I did not spell it out for charter members. I hinted at it because most of what I taught prior to having a formalized mentorship was me laying down breadcrumbs. I wanted to see – if anybody else would pick up on some of the things that I was looking at and seeing in price. And I would honestly tell you who they are if they were. Um, I'm certain once I leave, there's going to be all these people that come out and say, yeah, I, I had this figured out, but you've never seen them up to this point. So that's that's one of the things I am going to be turned off by. But the element of taking a standard deviation, which is equal distant measurements – Okay, for the folks that want to try to correct me, you don't know what a standard deviation is. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. The measurement of a fair value gap, a buy side of balance, sell side of efficiency, or a sell side of balance, buy side of efficiency, either one. Okay, if you have that measurement from high to low and you run standard deviations with that, if you get a standard deviation of that equal distance, replicated above and below and it agrees with a premium array that you're already anticipating as a draw, you have increased the probabilities of that trade exponentially. If you include standard deviations of a new week opening gap or a new day opening gap with the same thing, if you have convergence of those levels with those deviations above and below, if you're bullish, you're going to focus on the expansion higher with standard deviations moving up. If you start seeing these overlapping, and I, it has to be for, for Forex, it's going to be three to five pips. For futures, it's going to be two to three handles. That's how tight it's going to be. If you start seeing that convergence together, those targets are most of the time my targets. That's what I'm. That's the real thing I'm aiming for. And I'll take partials along the way that makes sense to what I've shown publicly, where – Oh, yeah, this is a buy side liquidity pool on a 15 minute time frame, but I'm using the structure that's on an hourly chart. But since there's a reason to take something off, and I'm teaching students to pay themselves because they're not going to have the ability to hold on to the full trade. I, know, I already know that. But if I teach them, it's okay. It's allowed. It's permissible for you to not have the ability or the, the courage to hold for the t- full trade. Take partials here. And it gives them mile markers to reach for. Say, okay, it's real hard for me to hold for this one, but if it gets there, I'm going to take the profit and I'll, I'll close the trade off and I'll just watch and see what happens, which is great. That allows for growth. But standard deviations can absolutely be mapped on imbalances, inefficiencies, and new week and new day opening gaps. 
Saucy. After my my boy Zussi. I love measuring gaps. I, I mentioned that a little before. Uh, I love hearing you say that. Wow. Traders. Mm. Get in the sauce. From ICT. Trader Roundup. Oof. I want to say thank you, Michael, for taking the time and the opportunity. I'll, I mean, selfishly, I'll ask, what are the chances or likelihood? I mean, you're going to hang up. It, when you say you're you're going to hang up Twitter, does that mean that uh, that that an opportunity or a chance of us having something like this could potentially ever happen again? Or is when you hang up Twitter, you're literally hanging it up and it's done, and 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 then it's just your SoundCloud. I, I mean. Yeah, I, I'm absolutely leaving Twitter. You know, I already have in mind what I want to say in a short little video that'll be posted on Twitter, 11.59, November 11th. So that way I took it all the way to the last minute. And there will be no tweets. I will not like any posts. I will not retweet someone else. I'm not looking at my Twitter won't have any association with it, but uh, everything will stay there. I've never deleted a tweet. I've never intended to remove them. I'm not going to take the account down. Um, that doesn't mean that, that Twitter won't remove the videos that I have with music up already with trade execution. So that's why I've already said, you know, if you like those things, you might want to download them and save them you know, until I get them up on my own website. And I can't promise when I'm going to get that done because I'm still looking at people, you know, presenting their, uh, their submissions for trying to make the five grand for, you know, redoing my website. I haven't picked anybody yet. So in case you're still on the fence about that, I haven't seen anybody do it where I like it yet. Um, I, my wife has allowed for one thing per week, but not to the degree that like we're doing here today. No way. It ain't going to happen. But she said one, one day per week, um, and it could, you know, it could be on a, a weekend day, but I cannot, and I'm not allowed to do anything throughout the week. That's her time. It's family time. And my job is to be a husband. So those work hours are Monday through Friday. And I get one weekend day where I can do something, but it can't take a lot of the day up. And I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. It's just, I don't know. It's going to be a big, a big adjustment for me. I'm sure it is, mate. I mean, for sure. Like, to answer your question, because I, I think I danced around it inadvertently, and I didn't mean to do that. I don't think I'm gonna have, I don't think I'm gonna have the opportunity or be available for the opportunity for like something like this again. And I know some people were saying that Top Step were interested in having me on it. I, I really don't really want to do that. I have a lot of people that have podcasts. I have a lot of people that have larger functions and, and things that I, I don't want that because. You hear me saying I don't want to be here doing it, and if I'm on here doing things like this, it's communicating the opposite. So I want to diminish. I want to enjoy the casual departure where I feel comfortable doing it, and I don't want to increase as I'm going out. I want to just slowly, smoothly just say a friendly goodbye, and I'm going to still be haunting everywhere, but I'm not going to be engaging publicly. That's all. Wow. I feel honored feel honored that you're here. So again, thank you. Thank you for coming in and doing this today. Very privileged. So yeah, man, I, I want to leave you with any final thoughts on that note with, you know, our time kind of wrapping up. Um, Knowing that this this is a very unique opportunity and uh, a closeness that the community gets with you that uh, that otherwise is is going to be limited. I mean, we're we're in October. We're less than a month away, winding down the very first bucket list item 
that you want to do that you're willing to make public for your wife, for your family, for anything. Is there a burning desire after? So, so November 12th hits. What's the first thing Michael Huddleston's going to do? We, I realize the cleats are getting hung up, but the man, not, not ICT, the man, what's, what's on that list? I know you want to spend time with the, the, with the wife and family, but is it, I mean, is it the Bugatti? <laughs> is it the, that, that beautiful car? Cause that, that looked pretty, uh, that looked like a pretty, uh, stellar flex. <laughs> uh, that's me trolling. I'm trying to be funny because I was just reacting to somebody else saying something to the effect of, you know, I don't know if they're being mean spirited or if they're just teasing with me. So I, I like to do those types of things. And unless you know me and you don't know my sense of humor, you, you won't pick up on sarcasm or, or things like that. I, that's not me. I would never do that. Um, the roads up here beat up my vets. So to have something like that, millions of dollars for a car, I would never, I would never spend millions of dollars on a car. It's a, that's an IQ test. And if you buy those fucking things, you're stupid. But I think that my wife wants to go to the Grand Canyon. And we've had things so many times in the last two months, three and a half months, come up that prevented that trip. And we were going to take the RV out, but now the weather's starting to change. So those things have to be winterized because if they freeze, it causes all kinds of problems, you know, plumbing. So she's wanting to plan a trip to do that. So we have to work out the logistics with the older kids to, you know, watch the house, watch the dogs and, and be here and you know, help manage the everyday thing while we're doing that. If in fact, that's what we do. It's still up in the air, but apart from that, there's not been one thing. Cause I'll be honest with you. My wife doesn't believe I'm going to do it. She's made it very adamant ultimatums. Like, hey, look, it's you know we're going to have real problems if you keep doing this. And I'm telling her that we're done. And because of that, well, a perfect example. I, this morning I said, you know, I should be done in about two hours. How long have we been going? A minute, brother. <laughs> a minute. <laughs> So she knows that my my nature is over delivering. So she's asked me to now redirect that to her in the in the boys, and she doesn't believe that I'm going to be able to do it. And I'm admittedly nervous because I don't know how to not be ICT. Like I, I don't know how to not be him. It's scary to think about it because that's who I've defined myself as for a very long time. But I don't want to lose my wife, and I don't want to make her any more upset than you know, she has been. Let Let me ask you this: It's a follow up to that thought. Like you've okay. heard of professional athletes leaving a professional league. Like I'll utilize an NFL player, or an NBA player, when they leave the NBA or if they leave the M- NFL, when they're used to these stadiums of just crowds of people sim- similar to what you do just with a tweet with a with any sort of interaction that you have within the community there is this withdrawal in you knowing yourself and your audience knowing you and your wife knowing you this disbelief could you see maybe some parallels with leaving this you know, coliseum of folks and there being some form of withdrawal? I mean, could you see, I could see where that could be difficult. I could see where that would be a challenge with, I mean, I I don't want to say it's a dopamine thing or, but there's almost like an adrenaline rush. I mean, I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, I'm just curious, like, are your wife has voiced skepticism, but if you were to utilize it in the terms of being like a professional athlete leaving or retiring, I at least have read and, and, and heard and studied others accounts in saying that there is this withdrawal. 
But it is I, I, really difficult. I, I'm already anticipating it. And, and I have been trying to condition myself because the level of output, in, if you've seen on the YouTube channel, I'm trying because I could literally put all kinds of videos up there. I could do reviews every single day. It was all about ad revenue and, and collecting that money like that. I could be pumping them out there and people would be watching and I'd be getting paid doing it. I'm trying to condition myself over the last couple months to do less and less and less. And look at my Twitter. Same thing. I'm tweeting less. Me not feel like it because I go on a rant once in a while. <laughs> but I've been tweeting far less than I have in the past because I know I'm going to have withdrawals. I'm going to have um, – you know, I, I'm going to be looking at my charts. I'm going to be trading, and I'm going to see something. And the natural impulse is go to Twitter and tweet out this. I'm going to have that. But I have to now discipline myself, and it's going to take my wife observing me probably not being my normal self. And that's why I have to also be cognizant of that and be aware that don't look like you're miserable because you're not doing what you're so used to doing because that will offend her. And then I'm afraid that I'll influence her. She'll, she'll say, you know, go do it. You give into it and just go do what you want to do. That's not fair to her. So I have, I have a lot of pressure on me to do something that I think in anybody else's eyes should be a very easy thing. If you don't want to do something, you just don't do it. But my whole life has been this. Like my whole life has been like I was inner circle trader before you knew me on baby pips. Like I've, I've been that guy. I've been that guy since 1997 going into 1988. Like that's when that's when inner circle trader was really coined. But before that, I was Ox. Oxic Tixo. That's who I was on America Online. That was me. But I've always uh, wait, been. Ox, what? Oc Oxic Tixo? Oxic Tixo. Oxic Tixo. I didn't know that. That's. Yeah. That's an interesting name. Yeah, I, I, you know, I love sharing and I love getting the feedback when people see it pan out. And that feedback on Twitter is, in, I guess, in a way, is a dopamine hit, but it's not on the basis of me being celebrity. It's on them sharing that moment of, see, it works, doesn't it? It has nothing to do with me. I'm completely outside the conversation. I'm just a conduit that says, hey, look here. Watch where it goes. And boop, it goes there. And I try to make an emotional response that you'll remember because everybody lives on emotion, right? I mean, think about the first time you had your heart broken. You know exactly where you were. You know exactly what it felt like and who it was. It leaves a scar. Well, I want to have a mile marker where you remembered being here live where I said, this is what it's going to do. And it happened. And then when I tweet and I have the tweet already typed out, as soon as I tell you before it, it's going to go there, I already have in mind what I want to say in the tweet. I tell you where it's going to go. And then I start typing out the tweet and picking the mean picture that I'm going to use with it. And then I have to sit there and wait for it. And then when the. Uh -oh, the person. See, the person trying to call me from Germany, <laughs> don't do that. Hold on one second. <laughs> Hang on. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, you're back. I had to put it on Do Not Disturb. I, I forgot to do it. Usually I do that because every time I do a live or I do a, a Twitter space, everybody like I, everybody knows my phone number. Like everybody has my fucking phone number and they either tweet to me. How you doing ICT? Good morning, ICT. Thanks for this or just that. And, have, you know, if I would have had my phone next to me when I was doing the live stream the other day, a couple of them were telling me, hey, there's no audio. Fix your audio. And while I appreciate that, uh, all of you are the reason why my phone number is changing in November. <laughs> I'm having an unlisted phone number in a business name you will never know about. So, you know, please just understand that I have to have my own privacy. And I know some of you would love nothing more to be able to say, you know, I got ICT's phone number in my phone and I can text him. He'll reply to me. Um, it, it, that's just not where I want to go with that. And I don't want to offend any of you or make you feel like I don't appreciate that love and adoration, but that's just beyond where I want to have our relationship. I want to be able to lay something in your hands, watch you run with it. I want you to be the star. All of you. I want to watch all of you rise up and be better than me, be bigger than me. You know, I, I want to see that in all of you. 
And not all of you are going to be able to do that. But if some of you do, that's going to entertain me the rest of my days. And I can't wait to see that. I love it. I love it. We got a who's who within the community here. We got we got a lot of folks here, and it's nice to see them here. I'm, I mean, you're used to the large audiences. It's nice that they engage with Trader Roundup and hanging out with us today. Uh, me being able to see you, and for me personally, having you and M7 in the same room, it's awesome. And... I really like the, the community building aspects versus the divisive tribal nature that some traders can take. So I just love having the most important. And for me, who have been the most important folks in my trading career in the same room, on the same call, <clears throat> understanding that this is a, a, a limited thing. This is limited edition. This is uh, not something that happens regularly. Um, I mean, I, I, I just, I want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you to ICT and to M7 for the clarity, for the increase that I've been afforded based off of your ability to communicate and articulate where and how you see price. And I believe you do it in such a way that this idea of universal just means that all of the components are there for an individual to be able to construct it and make it make sense for themselves in an otherwise chaotic, very competitive environment that is, you know, statistically conducive to loss. So again, I, I, I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart and how grateful and appreciative I am to have you, Michael here. And, uh, to have M7, who, who's been a real friend and mentor to me as well. Um, it's a very, very honor. It's very much an honor and a privilege to share the stage with you guys. And um, Michael, thank you for recreating our four-hour-plus interview from, from early on in April, doing it here for folks to get an opportunity to listen to. And yeah, I felt uh, a little guilty because uh, yeah, I tried very hard to clean that, that video up and I just I exhausted everything I could. It, I was like, you know what? I, I settled in on thinking I would just do an audio version of it. But I was like, it won't work. Like it won't work. It'll look different from all the other ones anyway. So I said, you know what? He asked if he could you know, do audio version. Okay. Well, I'll just, make myself available to, to hang out with y'all. And I'm, I'm glad that you at least see it wasn't the same conversation, obviously. I mean, we, you know, different things were said and we were being more personal that won't be here. But by far and large, most of everything else that would be not so personal, we covered it today. And I wanted to make sure since that was the one that I did last, it wasn't able to be making it up on my YouTube channel. Uh, you're welcome to share this and do whatever you want to do with it. It, it matters not to me you know, what you do with it. You. But I wanted to give you your time, and I, I felt like it was mis it was unfortunate because we spent some hours talking, and we had a good conversation, and it was lost to technical glitches in the the bandwidth coming through. So I was like, let's just let's just do it again. And I we're, I'm not going to do any more interviews. Like I apologize for the folks that want to do them. Um, I don't have enough time to do all them, and it's easier for me to just have a short little exchange with you on on Twitter while I'm here. And most of the stuff, really, if you really condense it, 
they're all just basically trying to tell me what they do with it and just say thank you. And there's a short way of doing it. Just send a tweet. I'll appreciate it. I'll like it. I'll show it to my family and say, here's another one. Everybody that ever shows me their results with what they've done with this, all my whole family sees it. I'm proud of you. You're like one of my children. I don't care if you're older than me. I look at you as you just did something that I can hang on my wall and say, that's mine. They listened and they did it. They're succeeding. I'm, they don't just like flash across my screen and I'm, I'm forgetting it. Like I have, I have screenshots of everything. Every one of your certificates that you pass, every time you do a withdrawal, every time you show me, you sent me pictures. I have boxes of stuff that people have sent me letters, pictures of their certificates. There are photographs, drawings, everything. I save all that stuff. I have all kinds of stuff saved up from even when I was doing the mentorship, people that wrote me and appreciate and, and saying this and saying that. I, yeah, in a lot of ways, I'm a pack rat for that because I don't, they're treasures to me. When I'm older and no longer anybody reaching out and it dies down, and I, I want it to, <laughs> I want to be able to sit back on my rocking chair and pull out these things and relive all these moments because they're like journals. They're like journal entries. They're people's lives that I was so fortunate enough to be able to touch and make something better for them by having my time and energy directed towards them and you've given me a gift by sharing your experience with what I've done with my entire life and I thank and appreciate all of you that have done that one more question I just thought of and it has to do with your boys mm -hmm. I utilize the analogy of or I utilize the analogy of a professional ball player retiring or exiting the league will say do you think you'll live vicariously through your boys i mean do you think uh, any one of them either either caleb or cody are gonna step up into uh nict junior role i mean because i'm pretty sure the community would embrace them and even if you're not engaged so much with it, I mean, you, you are creating a monster <laughs> in, mm -hmm. in your kids. I mean, that, that, I guess that would be one of like my last questions I think for you is it's like, where, where do you see? I see Cameron definitely on YouTube. He wants to do it. That's his character. He wants to, he wants to be out there doing it. Like he wants to show it off. He wants to be that person, um, but he doesn't have the discipline to use my highest forms of models. And if he can't do what he's expected to do with these lower form models, he's, he's not going to be able to do it with my enigma, my algorithm, the real, the real thing. He's going to have to have discipline sticking to these rules. And, he's not showing that yet. So when I'm away from social media, I'm going to be driving him to the point at which, or he will be much more open than I am. He's, it's his personality. It's not my personality. He wants to show off. He really wants to be out there doing it live. He really wants to do all those types of things. And if he learns how to do it well, he didn't say so, but I honestly believe he would make it available either by learning it from him doing it or just openly teaching it. And it's his to do that with. I, I don't care. Like once, once they have it, it's theirs. Caleb has flirted with the idea of, you know, I thought about it, but I think I would be nervous in front of other people because if they ask me questions and if I don't have the experience here yet to answer it, I would feel uncomfortable being in a position where I can't answer the question. And like, he doesn't want to be trolled. He, he, he's a very laid back, passive person like my son, Cody. He, he's not he's not one of those people that would be adversarial. Cameron, absolutely a fucking savage. He wants to get out there. He wants he's wanting it to happen. He's inviting it, but he's in a hurry to get to, to doing it without having the skill set yet. So it's, it's this youth that's in the way right now. So while I'm away, I'm turning them into freaks. My name ain't going to come up so much, but they are, those are. If, if not any other, it'll be Cameron. 
Interesting. So Cameron, Caleb, and Cody. Cameron's the one that is. Uh, I mean, does, would he go with that? Do you know what he might have a social media persona as? I mean, is that? I mean, he doesn't does, have would, a social media now. There's already people out there pretending to be him. Um, he he does not have social media. He does not have a YouTube channel. He does not run a Telegram. He does not have a Discord. He doesn't have a Facebook. He doesn't have any of that stuff. He doesn't have any of that shit. And I told him. If he gets to where I believe he's ready for it, I would make an announcement on my YouTube channel saying, here is my son Cameron's social. You're welcome to follow him and bring it because that, that, at that time, he, he'll be ready. Because he, 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 wants, he wants that. He wants all that smoke. All of it. <laughs> he wants all of it. All of it, huh? Yeah, that's what he wants. Ooh, I love that, man. I, 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 wow. I, so, I, I'm excited. I'm excited for that day to come. And I think as a dad, you'll live very vicariously through them. I will make appearances. If he has a social media and he has a YouTube channel, I will show up periodically, sparingly. If he has that, I'll show up there. But anywhere else, I won't do it. And it's just to help promote his whole whole thing. But he wants to trade in front of everybody. That's what he wants to do. Like he wants to do that. But him going up on the, the top step leaderboard and you know being recognized there, that fed him. Like that gave him that little seed in there. Now he's like, I wanna be top dog dad. I wanna be better than you. And I want people to say these words, you're better than your dad. And I'm all fucking for it. I want to hear everybody say that. I want everybody to see that. I want to do it, and I want to try to create as much as I can in him so he can do that. And then I want all the other ones to try to keep up with him. And then I've, and I've been successful in, in what I've been trying to do with them my entire life. I don't see my youngest son – admittedly, I, I don't see him as a traitor. I, I don't think he has the, the makeup to do it. And He's challenged. So – you know, it's, I don't think it's any fault of his own. I'm not saying it's a complete wash. He can't do it. I'm just at this point now. I don't think he has it in him to do it. And we have to do a lot more to help him along. And, but the other ones, the other three, I think Cameron is going to be the one that excels past it because he's, his disposition is just like that. Like he, he's a go-getter. He's, he's arrogant as fuck. He's, he's confident. He's, he wants that engagement. He wants to challenge. He wants to be able to talk smack. He wants to do all that shit, but he doesn't have a skill set yet. But you can see what he's already done in its early stages. You know, that's not a lot of money that he made, but that's a huge milestone to pass those challenges that most people fail. If you, if, if those numbers are correct, and and a lot of the companies are coming out and being forthcoming with the information, saying that like one percent ever get to being funded and even there they don't even get a payout he got two of them in the same month after getting there and to have 12 days sitting with uh, winning every day 12 days in a row and to be recognized even though it wasn't a lot of money that to him is like a big deal and to me as his dad it's a big deal so it's given him the foundation to say you know what i can do this and if i can do this this early on where am i going to be at two years from now where am i going to be at five years from now and you know if he wants to start you know teaching this stuff on a youtube channel that's his business who's going to say he shouldn't do it i'm not going to say don't do that you know i i'm all for it like i want to see what all of you want to do and I, even more i want to see what my own kids do and i think you would enjoy seeing it you know whatever comes from it whether you know he gets better than me or not i don't you know I don't know. I want it to happen, but even if he doesn't and he just is consistent, I think my audience would just segue right over to see five morbid curiosity. What is what's his son doing today? And there it is. Ooh, I love it. I have a feeling you you, you got some monsters coming out of that. <laughs> I have a feeling Cameron is uh I mean it's, uh, it sounds like <laughs> he's going to be the one, uh, but but I, 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 I could see you having a whole camp of traders coming out with uh, with old yeah. dad's concepts, pushing it out on YouTube and getting, you know, thousands of folks engaged instantly. 
if not yeah. tens of thousands. And old dad will be like, let me let, let me show you guys what's up. I haven't forgotten yet either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can see it, bro. I, 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 I literally think of a professional athlete retiring and their kid having watched them from the sidelines the whole time, getting old enough, mature enough, getting capable enough, and that transition happening. I, I, I could very easily see it. And I, I, I'm excited, and I, I'm rooting for for the kiddos yeah. coming, grow. It's time. It's time for them. It's time for me to sit down and sit back and watch them climb up. It's awesome, man. I think that's a good place for us to leave it, as far as with time and respecting your wife and graciously. Thankfully, appreciative of, of of you, you know, giving your time and energy here and, and, and the flowers earlier and even asking some of the questions and whatnot. Uh, we definitely recorded it and we'll, we'll definitely try and keep it living in the uh, in the interwebs for 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 future prosperity. I appreciate you being patient with me because I. I, I... Like I told you, I, I planned on having it again and, and working it out, but you know, with everything going on in, at home and Cody getting hurt and we have other things going on in an extended family that's just been such a big distraction. And with me trying to also end all this stuff and come to a, a conclusion that is satisfactory to me, it's just everything keeps falling to the back, farther back in the queue. So I'm glad that we were able to have an opportunity to, to sit down and, and, and chill and, and conversate with one another and had an opportunity to tell everybody, you know, what I think about in more detail, what I think you do with your community. And I hope it grows. I really hope it does. I hope there's more people that come to it, not necessarily using our stuff, but other traders that like to be around other supportive, mature audience members that have an appreciation for people that want to get out there and, and get it done. And they don't have to have the same game plan but they can respect the grind that everybody else is doing to get where they got to get so i've had fun talking with you i've had fun you know conversing with some of the members that had the opportunity to come in if you didn't get a chance to talk you know hope you're not offended um but you're obviously welcome to send me direct messages on on twitter uh, not not a direct message i don't i don't have my messages i will never direct messages anybody but uh if you want to tweet something to me or whatever you know, i read everything I read everything. It might take me a day or two to get to eventually, but I see them all. And I, I just greatly appreciate everybody's willingness to, to spend time with what it is I've put out. And I wish you nothing but all success. And I look forward to hearing what you all do with it. And thanks again, Kit. Thank you, Michael. I, I've got ICT Concepts Explained on my uh, my YouTube channel. So hopefully I can get you... Uh, creeping in there uh every once in a while if and when i uh trade there or whatever so i'll uh i'll keep you informed that's for sure and uh yeah man thank you for everything today was awesome and um we'll leave it here so uh Comments are open. DM, my DMs are open. Feel free to engage. Some of you have my number. Some of you have my WhatsApp. Uh, that won't stop or change. Uh, there's a lot of scammers out there that are going to creepily ask you how your trading is and to, and to join some <laughs> some group or something. We, we do everything here, and we do it in the open. And uh, you, You'll see it on my page with the blue check if it's coming from here, from me. So, um, again, thank you, Michael. Uh, thank you. I'm seven for, for at least being here, brother. And, uh, it's been an honor and a privilege and, um, all the love and all the respect in all the world. Thank you. Thank you, Michael, from the bottom of my heart for everything. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. Peace.